It's time for Twig This Week in Google. Matthew Ingram joins Jeff and Gina. We'll talk about glass. We're learning a lot more. In fact, we'll also talk about Sorek, who's hacked glass. The jailbreak is here. I'll give you a little preview of the Galaxy S4. Compare it to the HTC One 2. It's all next on Twig. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twig. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by CashFly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twig, This Week in Google, episode 196, recorded May 1st, 2013. Oppa Samsung style. This Week in Google is brought to you by Hover.com. Hover is the reliable domain name registration and management service that's simple, honest, and easy to use. For exceptional customer support and 10% off your new domain name, visit hover.com slash twig and use the offer code twig. And by 99designs, the world's largest online graphic design marketplace. 99designs connects businesses seeking quality, affordable designs with a community of over 200,000 graphic designers. Visit 99designs.com slash twig to receive a free design consultation. It's time for Twig This Week in Google, the show that covers Google, the cloud, Facebook, Twitter, all of that stuff. Really, frankly, anything that our esteemed panel wants to cover. Because when you get people like this together in a room talking, I'm not going to be the guy that says you, we're, that's off topic. We'll start with Matthew Ingram all the way over here from Giga Ohm, just back from Italy. Hello, Matthew. Hi. Good to have you. You were in Perugia for what conference? Uh, the International Journalism Festival. Fest it wasn't a conference. It was a festival. Yeah, it was, yeah, like a conference, but more fun. <laughs> Sounds awesome. Awesome. <laughs> also with us, professor of journalism at the City University of New York, the author of What Would Google Do and Public Parts, the esteemed Jeff Jarvis. Blogger. You're going in reverse order. I am. I'm throwing you, aren't I? <laughs> usually I, yeah, you got to mix it up. Yeah. Mix it up. Yeah, I usually start with ladies first. Gina Trapani of SmarterWare.org, founding mm -hmm. editor of Lifehacker and a creator of ThinkUp at thinkup.com. Hello, everybody. Oh, and host of All About Android. Yeah. Yes, of course. So and yesterday, uh, you, I, I let you guys, this is a review unit from AT&T of the Galaxy S4. Mine's. On, I just heard mine shipped today. From I, I bought the unlocked European one from Expansys, which has eight, has the octa-core. <laughs> it's an eight-core. This is, AT&T's is wow. a quad-core Snapdragon. But no LTE, then? No LTE, but I'm going to run it on T-Mobile, and their HSPA Plus is, is pretty fast here. So I don't need LTE. I wanted an unlocked phone for travel, right, Matthew? Yeah. You need an unlocked mm -hmm. phone. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and, uh, but, I, but, uh, but Samsung did lend us this, or uh, I guess AT&T lent us this for a review, uh, and I will review it on Before You Buy next week. But uh, we did a little unboxing yesterday. You guys played with it on Alabama Android. What were your thoughts? Oh, when we checked it on All About Android? Didn't you? Yeah, we did. We totally did, Ron. Thank you for lending it to us. Um, we, we really like it. It's a beautiful phone. Uh, I think the one thing we were concerned about was that the the storage, a lot of storage, it ships with like 16 40 gigs. storage already used. Yeah, yeah, it's only 16 gigs total, but you can't right. put an SD card. My experience with Android, though, is SD cards don't work as well as internal memory. Have you had right. that? You can't but, put apps on it. Right. right. Well, you but, can. But it's, well, but. it's like half full, right, when it ships? Yeah. Let me half see. I'll, uh, let's, let's just check. So, uh, phone problem too. and I've already put apps on here, so it won't, it, this is not going to show what it, what it has when it ships, but this is the other thing by goodness gracious, there are a lot of settings. This is the settings panel. They now, it's now tabbed. So I presume I'll go to my device and look for storage. It, you got to get used to a whole new way of finding stuff. And I don't see it there. Maybe, maybe under more. Yeah. Storage. So that was tab three total space left after now I've installed a hundred apps is nine gigs. I've got two okay. gigs of applications. I don't, I don't have any pictures, videos, or audio on here yet. Mm -hmm. um, so, ava oh, I'm sorry. Totals, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Total space, 9.62 gigs. That's yeah. total available space after I put my stuff on 6.9 gigs. So you are going to buy, you need to buy an SD card in here. And absolutely, there won't be room for pictures, videos, or audio on the main storage. You'll have to put it on the SD card. And you uh, can't uninstall so any of the Samsung apps. Those things. It's odd. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can't uninstall these Samsung apps without rooting, I presume. Right. 
Right. So mm. that was a little bit like, eh, not loving that, but beautiful looking, good looking phone. I mean, I'm really torn. I, I love the HTC One. I just, I love that the speakers are on the front. I love the design of it. It just, the hardware looks r really nice. Uh, but I am curious about the Samsung apps in particular. Uh, and and uh, the S4 looks really, looks really nice. You have the screen side by side, right? Yeah, like, here's you know, identical. I now, and I should say on the Galaxy S4 uh, AMOLED, I've set it to movie mode which uh, supposedly is the most color accurate mode. It's not that bright Samsung uh, AMOLED look. Um, is the HTC thinner? Uh, they're, they're pretty similar. HTC is a little, maybe a little thinner. It feels heavier because of it's metal. Um, the Samsung, I already re remarked the fact because it's plastic, it feels cheesy. It's made even cheesier by this pseudo chrome on the uh, edge here, which it just really feels junky. That's plastic? It's plastic. Not it's chrome. all plastic. And, yeah. and that's fine because it's you get better antenna characteristics. If you know, if it's a question of hardware, um, the nice thing about the one is it has 32 and 64 gigabyte models. So you can have plenty of storage on here. You can't add an SD card, but in some ways I think main storage trumps SD because you can use all of it for apps and so forth. Um, the screen I think is better on the HTC One. Both are 1080p screens. HTC One is a higher dot pitch because it's slightly smaller, 4.7 compared to 5. Uh, but I think it's also because it's an IPS LCD. I think the screen is is more accurate than... A lot of people love Super AMOLED look, that that rich saturation, the deep blacks. And I have to agree, but this screen, to me, the HTC One screen is a better screen. Um, battery life yeah, is yeah, poor but... on both of them, but because the HTC is not removable... Uh, it's more of an issue. I actually am buying a Mophie case for this HTC One. Uh, the Galaxy uh, S4, I'm going to do as I've done with other uh, Samsung phones, which is just buy a separate battery because it's very easy to pry off the back on the Galaxies and put a new uh, battery in. Uh, I think that's a real advantage to having... That's where plastic gets you somewhere, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, you know, and if you're going to put it in a case, and I think in both cases you probably are, then who cares what the actual phone... Uh, feels like um, both are very fast. I don't think you're gonna. Some people have complained about, and I haven't had this S4 long enough, but I have read reviews that complain about some hesitation and sluggishness on the S. By the way, you notice I have replaced Sense and TouchWiz with my own launcher. I use the Nova launcher, and I far prefer different widgets as well. Um, but uh, that's going to be the big difference, in my opinion, and the deciding factor on which phone you get uh, is. Yeah, and by, and yes, you're right, Gina. The front-facing speakers are so much superior on the HTC One. That boom sound yeah, really they, and is they're, great. They're, they're running a commercial uh, centered around the speakers, like you know, basically saying it makes no sense if you want to listen to something that the speakers should. should be facing forward, right? It has like bands on stage facing the back, <laughs> yeah. and it really, it really gets the message across. Yeah, no, they're really smart. I mean, you know, on one hand, I think, well, like, am I really watching something that I care about the audio being perfect on my phone? No, but you know, increasingly, people watch videos and pass their phone around, and and you know, listen to voicemails on speaker. I mean, it really does make a lot more sense. You know, you might on the front because of these good speakers, it might. Change change things a little bit because uh, you, be, you can actually just prop the uh, HTC one up and listen to a book or even music and it sounds good enough. So yeah. in a case where you might have bought external speakers for uh, your phone, it's not, it's pretty good. It's certainly good enough for an audio book, the surprisingly good sound. But the big difference I think is the customizations that both manufacturers did to Android. I think that's really, especially for our audience, where it's going to be a deciding factor. And it's really going to depend how, on how you, what you do, what you want to, your phone to do. HTC Sense dumbs this phone down considerably. And there's things you cannot change. I'll give you a really simple example. Uh, my lock screen. Now, I happen to like the HTC Sense lock screen a lot. I'm using a photo uh, screen, so it's doing a photo album. It's got time and weather. But these four, uh, five icons on the bottom, the, the, the controls, phone, message, lock, internet, and camera cannot be changed. I, don't, I use Chrome. I don't use the built-in internet browser. I don't use the AT&T messages instead of the standard message. So I would like to change these. On the Samsung, the lock screen is infinitely, in fact, perhaps too configurable. Notice I've taken off the Ooh. Life Companion, replaced it with my name. That was one of the first <laughs> things uh, I did. But you can put widgets on here. You you can really change it. HTC Sense is much more locked down. Uh, there are not nearly as many settings when you go to the system settings. And of course, with Sense, as with uh, Samsung's TouchWiz, they've changed how the standard Android settings look and work. And 
AT&T has configured this too, and this may be different for you, but AT&T has taken away some things that I find very valuable. For instance, in power usage, I want to know, is it this, this is prettier than the, by the Android look, but I want to know when it comes to usage, how much is devoted to the screen AT&T or HTC, I'm not sure which, has disabled that, I believe. it's. They, they obviously went out of their way to obscure that information from you. Because the screen which, is a big part of the drain. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they went out of their way to remove that from the list. I find that very annoying. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's shady. It's, it's shady, shady is what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and uh, you know, so that's, that's going to be the negative on the HTC One if you're the kind of person that really wants to get in there and tweak it. Samsung's gone the exact opposite direction. I've never seen so many settings. I've never this is fa this rivals Facebook for the number of tweaks and settings and things you can do. Hundreds of settings in here. Everything is configurable. If you're the kind of person that wants a phone where you customize it up the wazoo, if you'll forgive my French, this is a much better choice for you. If you're the kind of person that wants a phone just to be beautiful and functional, then the one I have to say I really like the Zoe's and the highlights that the HTC One makes. Um, I think that that is a the camera is a great feature. I like the low light capability of the camera. I think the HTC One camera does rival the iPhone Five, even in bright light. It's a very nice camera, despite its four megapixels. Samsung opted for this thirteen megapixel camera, and and the other thing about that you'll notice with the Galaxy S four immediately, it's the the load up of crapware is unbelievable. Things like scrolling a page as you look up and down i don't know anybody who's going to use this the camera settings go on and on and on and on i mean it's just there's so much you can do with this thing um uh, you know again if you like that kind of thing if you like to be able to customize everything like crazy you're going to be very happy um a lot of it feels like junkware and certainly some of the things like hovering and and, uh, and and scrolling with the eyes and stuff feel like uh, feel a little bit gimmicky. However, you know, I played a little bit, for instance, with the uh, Samsung. Um, some of the Samsung modes are very interesting. Let me uh, see if I can find the. Um, uh, go back to my gallery here. I did a what is that? They, they call that the highlight mode or the superstar mode, where you could take a picture of a person moving and get, <laughs> get all the images. <laughs> The, the one okay. has a few things sort of like this, but um, I I think that that's still also a little bit uh, uh, gimmicky. I, you know, I don't know. There's so many modes in this thing. It's so You have such a good staff, Leo. They play along. They really do. They're they so totally along. game. Yeah, there goes. So you tap this mode button, and it has auto mode, which is probably where you mostly work. Beauty face. Uh, best photo takes a series of pictures, selects the best. It takes eight pictures. Best face... You take a number of pictures, five pictures of a group, and then pick which part of the group you want the best face from and combine the five pictures. The one does something very similar, although I couldn't get it to work. Sound and shot is a still where there's audio behind it. Drama is the one that I was showing where it's multiple pictures of somebody moving in a single frame. The stupidest one, there's animated photo, which is uh, the stupidest one is the one, of course, with you in the middle of it, um, where it, it takes pictures from both the front and the back cameras very very strange um i don't i'm not oh, the dad photo right yeah like the, the dad photo taking, the yeah. yeah dad's always taking pictures yeah, really of the kids. weird yeah yeah I, I i have a few of those and and you have different frame uh, treatments and so forth but it just it, to me it looks very odd here i'll, I'll show you what mine looked like because it looks like my head's just floating in the middle of the picture <laughs> I, I got to tell you, I'm kind of exhausted just going through all of those. This feels like the Microsoft Word. It is. Right? Like it would just, just get more and more setting, more and more features to just to sell another new version, right? Right. But it would just be exhausting. Like as a user, you'd be like, I just want to bold some text. Yeah. Right? Or take a photo. Yeah. yeah I just like to take a photo. I don't want to like scroll through this endless carousel of 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 special shots that I don't even know what they mean. What is beauty face? I, I, know I don't know. Is beauty face, <laughs> face going to help me out on this HD camera here? Yeah, beauty Leo. face. I don't want beauty. So you're exactly right. And so to me, this is the kind of philosophical difference between the two. Uh, you know, you really should add the Nexus 4 as the third choice. The Nexus 4 is the pure Google phone, right? That's what uh, I've got. Yeah, no LTE, but uh, in every other respect, a pure phone. This is making me uh, hold all the more dearly to my Nexus 4 yeah. and hope that Google mm -hmm. comes out with a pure phone soon, like yeah. in two weeks. I think what yeah. Google could do at, at, at Google I.O. Is, is exactly do this X phone from Motorola that has the power and capability mm -hmm. of something like the HTC One without all of the restrictions mm -hmm. and the gloss. 
But what, if you want a phone, uh, if you're choosing between these two and you want a phone that just does a great job, is a beautiful phone, I'd like the HTC One. If you want more capability to customize, then I think the Galaxy S4. They're both very good phones, very similar in category. They do best the uh, the Nexus 4 in, you know, in a number of ways because they're more recent. So the real question is, what's Google going to do to respond to these? Because these are now the standard, I think. Yeah, yeah, for I what it's worth on Omen it, Android. It was... Oh, sorry, Jeff. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, for what it's worth on All About Android, uh, the consensus is that we, you know, that the, the really nice handsets, but we're all sort of biased. Of course, it's a, it's a show about Android, but we're all sort of biased toward the pure Android experience. Right. Uh, so Ron, Ron was saying last night, was he showing his phone? Like, yeah, I like this. I just don't like the extra software. And I feel the same way. I, mm -hmm. I'm, I've yeah. been sort of true to the Nexus line since the beginning. Uh, and um, while I'm tempted by the HTC One because the hardware design is really nice, I just... I, I, I just I want my Android just straight out of Google uh, and see exactly what the sort of default intended experience is. I'm with you, Gina. I don't like a lot of that software and stuff. It it makes me not want it. It makes me want. Yeah, exactly. What well, well, it's a question then. What would be wrong for a Samsung to say it's an option that you can clean it up and just go back to pure Google? Well, it's going to happen because uh, as, uh, the, it may happen first with the HTC One, the Cyanogen. Folks immediately bought HTC ones. HTC supports uh, unlocked boot bootloader right out, out of the box, um, and so um, I think people will probably root it in Cyanogen mod. I think they already have a beta, early beta mod. So presumably you will be able to at some point put 4.2 on here pure. That might be kind of interesting. Although I I do like some of the HTC features. I mean, I just, I wish that, uh, like, companies like Samsung would kind of take the Facebook home approach where it's like, hey, here's the Samsung launcher. You have an option to set as your default launcher. The, the phone ships with it as your default launcher, but you can change it to something else. Yeah. Here's, yeah. here's a folder full of Samsung apps, which you can uninstall and which you, right. by, exactly. by it's right. set as your default. But you know what? When you click on tap on camera, you can choose. Do you want the built-in mm -hmm. Android camera? Or do you want the Samsung camera? You, you know, you, you tap on the always box. You make your choice. I mean, right. it just would be so respectful to choice. users to say, hey, yeah, give a choice. Like, hey, this is yeah. our product. We're going to make them the defaults, but you're you're free to back out and, and, and choose something else if you want. Um, I, you know, I'd love to see that, but that's just not that's just not how it works, right? They, Samsung's trying to differentiate, right? They're trying to say this is this is our platform, I and mean, they, they didn't they didn't say the word Android. I think they said the word Android no. once during their whole presentation. So they're you know they they're trying to it, dress it up in Samsung style. Uh, does do they sing it, Gina? Word Should we show word? before we show that video, <laughs> 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 which we are going to? I just want to say that I think this is a trend in tech in general. I've noticed this, uh, and it came up on Twitter on Sunday because you're we talking about Microsoft very, very reluctantly saying, "Well, we might add." Well, actually, they haven't said. The rumors are they might add boot to desktop in Windows 8. I th I blame Apple. I think Apple paved the way in ignoring users. Yeah. And saying yes. our way or the highway, we believe yeah. we know exactly how it should be, and we're going to give you that. Now, to Apple's credit, they were often right. Steve had great taste, right? Yeah, uh, only ones right. <laughs> right, but yeah. but uh, but what yeah. happens is everybody looks at them and says, "Oh, maybe this is the way to differentiate in a market of com that's becoming commoditized." And there's nothing more commoditized than Android phones. Maybe the way to differentiate is to tell the users what they want. And I think Windows 8 is a good example of a company by fiat saying you will do it this way or, or no other way. Uh, Microsoft's done it. I think Samsung's doing it. I think to, HTC's doing it. It's the yeah, way they differentiate. But I agree, it's disrespectful to users. I think we should come step forward as users and just say exactly what you just said, Gina. Give what, us a choice. What, what drew me to these devices was the Google apps. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. That's exactly right. S Translate, I, I, well, okay, Google Translate. I, mean, is it, I want Google Maps, right? I mean, look, if someone else comes out with a better navigation app, that, that hasn't happened yet, right? But but I, I want Google Maps. I want Gmail, right? Like, that's, I feel like that's the, the, the offering. I mean, right now, that's the offering. I know that that's not what Samsung wants. You know, Samsung wants you to buy the, their phone because the Samsung apps are superior, but they just haven't proven that yet. And, and look right. at that if I, if I, if I, if I, camera, if I, you know, they're not getting there. Right, and Gina, if I like their hardware, but one different software, what's the harm to them mm -hmm. if I still buy their phone? Mm -hmm. Right. And well, it's the other thing is, I, I was in the, uh, by the Best Apple. Buy by Me now has a gigantic Samsung uh, display space, really big. It's like a little store in the store. And uh, so, I, which A, was interesting, but then B, I was playing with the Note 8. 
uh, which which I'm tempted by versus my Nexus 7 because it has the pen, and the pen makes sense on something that size, I think. Uh, so I might, you know, buy that Samsung thing, and I'm not so dependent on the tablet as I am on the phone for all these applications I use, and maybe I'm going to be okay with the Samsung stuff then, and I need the pen stuff there. I'm okay with it. I'm not, I'm not anti at all. I just want choice. Yeah, I mean, I, it's funny, like, I'm, I've always been sort of interested more in software than in hardware. I'm, I've never, like, I'm not much of a gadget freak, but I look at that HEC one, I'm like, that's a beautiful. Well, that's the that's thing, the Nexus 4 that. is only 768, uh, this is 1080, um, you don't have LTE, you can get LTE on the HTC one if you go with an LTE carrier. Um, so, I'm not a big, I'm not a huge fan of the Nexus 4, I think you make some hardware compromises so you're saying i want pure hard i want pure software and i'm willing to compromise on the it's hardware. more important to me yep yeah uh, it, it, which which is odd but but uh, i want simplicity and it's not like pure. we're giving up it's not like you're giving up you get all the same things plus right on these phones yeah. there's a few things you're giving up on the one particularly where they're just things you can't customize that's a that's a pain yeah, I, and that's a little paternalistic. I'm a little unhappy about that. But again, I'm sure I could root this and do something with it. But you know, those companies like Samsung should look at people I know who are Apple devotees and have uh, had iPhones forever, and they're using Google apps on right. the iPhone because right. the apps are better. Right. And then eventually yeah. that probably might suck them into, you know, going fully Android. Well, I think that the, you can make that case, and I think Google's smart to be making these reference phones. Mm -hmm. I really felt the Nexus 4 was a developer phone. I'm, I was I was surprised to see how much consumer acceptance. I thought it, it was at first too, but it's but it's just a, it's a good phone. People like it. I'm kind of tempted to get one just to have, you know, to see the differences. I guess because I don't know what I had, I actually don't know what vanilla Android looks you know, like. No, I think it's Leo. I think it's so good. I would say it's the. Pixel of phones. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do that, don't you? You well, have to good. do that. That good. All right, let's play the. Uh, so oh, Jeff, man, Jeff, and Google Plus posted this, um, and do we know? We don't know where it came from. No. no it's the Samsung. Samsung, 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 Samsung. India. Pardon me. It's S four launch event from India, so it was it, Indian S four launch event. Roll, roll it back so we can see it from the beginning. You gotta see it from the beginning here. Sorry. Uh, and this, by the way, I did a little research. This guy is not uh, just some guy off the street. He's a he's a fairly well known Bollywood star, up and coming Bollywood star, Ranveer Singh. It's interesting they use size image for this. So it's very Bollywood. And if you're gonna launch a phone in India, why not? Samsung 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 then this phone is even better. It has an HD screen and it's just a lot slimmer. 41 <laughs> PPI is not just a number. Look at this clarity, it's brighter. I like it. Message pe only lag rao to wo khulta hai. Jab tum na dekho to ye video pause karta hai. Upar se niche dekho page scroll karta hai. You gotta understand your market. I think culturally. This fits the market. It's Bollywood. It's crazy garish. I mean, it's much like the Broadway uh, launch in yeah. New York. And I'm not Indian, so I don't know. But my sense is this probably speaks to the Indian uh, customer better than the Broadway thing spoke to American customers. Well, the Broadway thing didn't speak to an American customer. That's the point. No, it's and I know. And I, but see, I know I'm not Indian, so I don't know. But I would guess this is more... I mean, he's doing the dance. That's not Bollywood. That's the Psy dance. Yeah, but it's a... Bo well, you, well, obviously, yeah, you don't okay. watch Bollywood movies, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I... <laughs> You're right. I don't watch a lot the of The normal movies. reaction of people who've not seen Bollywood before is, boy, that's cheesy and garish. Well, I mean, that's I've seen true. Bollywood routines, like, in, you know, there's... Uh, in various shows. There's been one in... Uh, the, there was one in, was there one in Glee? There was one in Smash. Felicia Day did yeah. one with, uh, with yeah, her Yeah, she did a great anyway. one. Yeah, yeah she, she did, did a, a great really one. good one. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway. This follows, in, in, there was also a, a Samsung appliance marketing launch in South Africa, which for no good reason had lots of bikini women in it, which caused a furor there. There's something about Samsung marketing that's a little off. Well, we've, I, we've decided that too much money is the problem. Yeah. Because uh, somebody, somebody, uh, pointed out that the, the amount of money dedicated to marketing is directly 
correlated to the amount of money they're making. So the more they make on the phones, the more they have to spend on marketing. And at some point, you have too much money to spend on marketing, obviously. <laughs> Well, I was saying on all that Android last night, like they worked. I mean, we're talking about it. We've played it on two shows now. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're yeah. we're saying that it was that it, that it's a, a little embarrassing. I mean, I I was a little embarrassed <laughs> for the guy who the lead singer, but hey, I, it was fun. I mean, I watched it. Yeah, and I just think we don't don't have the cultural uh, ability to uh, context to context for it. Well, judging from the Broadway launch in New York, I was like, oh, hmm. that we we have the cultural context to. Can. Yes, and I <laughs> love Broadway. I love Broadway. I do, I do too. And yeah, Virgil just said in the chat room, Big, Big Bang Theory did do a Bollywood routine. That's right. Yeah, Bollywood's that. everywhere now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, let's take a break. We're going to come back with more great panel. Matthew Ingram. By the way, we already determined before the show, nobody here has glass. No, but okay, next week no. I'll have it. I'll have it on Wednesday. You're get. You got your really? invite. Mm -hmm. I did. I got my invite. I'm very, very excited. Um, gonna I'm going to drive up to Google LA this uh, this weekend. So, gonna yeah, go, you, gonna... you decided. You have the choice, right? They'll mail it to you, but you can also get it fitted and get trained. Exactly, yeah. They'll mail it to you. They start shipping today on May 1st. Ah. And, but uh, they, they strongly encourage that you come to the office. And I guess it's a fitting, which takes about 30 minutes, which sounds long to me. But And then there's a tour. They take you on like a like an hour-long tour of uh, using glass. Oh, fun. Uh, so, yeah, I'm I'm super, I'm really excited. I know, super I know, fun. it's dorky. I'm uh, really excited, though. So, super Gina, are you, are you going to wear it in the shower? I'm not going to wear it in the shower. <laughs> no. Just checking. Yeah, okay, no. so uh, let's get it out of the way. Uh, Robert Scoble, uh, <laughs> who has, this is, uh, there's a precedent. He did this before to publicize his book with uh, Shell, Israel. Uh, he and Shell were together in the shower naked. That was even more uh, unappealing. Disturbing, yeah. Well, yeah. My, my reaction to this confirm. picture is very simple. Don't look down. <laughs> That's a cod well, piece. So did, did you see that uh, Scoble and Andrew Keen were kind of having at it at, a, I think yeah. it was the NextWebs conference. They were having a, a sort of confrontational discussion where a Andrew Keen was basically like, are you going to wear that in the public bathroom? Like, I'm not going to stand next to you yeah. at a urinal wearing those things Didn't in your Scoble head. Didn't Scoble in his review say he went into something like four different men's rooms with the glass he did, on? Yeah. He, he said, said he'd been in like 20 minutes. Scoble wrote a very, very good Google post, Google Plus post only about a half an hour ago. In which he just, you know, in, in, in Robert length, but he just said, come on, folks. You know, of course I'm not going to do that. You know, you're just going, the privacy people are going overboard preemptively. And, and I'm glad he was fighting the fight. Yeah, I mean, I have to say, like, it seemed like, you know, he was saying, like, I, the, the, they're not on all the time. I'm not recording at all times. I mean, I think there are new social norms that have to get formed around this. He said someone suggested putting the glasses kind of on top of his head when you're in the bathroom, which would be mm -hmm. sort of a way to sort of signify, like, hey, I'm not I'm not recording. Mm -hmm. He also said, you know, I don't look down. Men don't look down. It's like man code, right? I mean, you, you just don't do you that. Don't. Right. And that's something there's no laws about that. There's no, you know, signs. You just know not to do that. And he's saying, no like, this either, is. By the way. Yeah, no, no talking. I don't know. <laughs> but that, that, that's presuming that whoever is wearing these creepy glasses in the men's room is going to is going to adhere to these well, but, but mores. Yeah, and I don't think that there's any uh, reason to assume but, that. Well, no, hold on. Have you ever been in a men's room where somebody had a, their cell phone out? I mean, did yes. guys not take their – so how do you know that they're not well, I've, taking I've a picture? I've seen guys talking on this, – this is far more disgusting. I've seen guys talking on the phone while wheezing. I saw a guy – Wait. doing that, and then he dropped his phone into the urinal and oh, screamed, and everybody in the room applauded. No. <laughs> All, I kid you not. Everybody went, yeah! Me. I had a guy pitch me on a story at, at a urinal. That is, to me, wearing Google Glasses is way better than that. Yeah, because at least with glasses... F.N. Dunn in our chat room says there's no legal right to privacy in a public restroom. That cannot be true. No, no, that's not because because if, if, if cameras. No, that's wrong. That's wrong. It's not a public restroom. Cameras, uh, you know, pervs have put cameras in public restrooms and gotten arrested for it. Uh, yes. No, that's not the case. There's a presumption of privacy there. But 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 the point is, yeah, I mean, a little LED light is gonna. I guarantee you, is gonna be put on the glass in the next version, so, so people will know it's recording or not. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a, but B, Leo, I gotta disagree that this idea of if it can go wrong. Then with one, if there's one bozo, one ass in the world who might do this, then, oh, my God, the thing is ruined. Well, that's true of a lot of life, you mm -hmm. know, cars, uh, uh, phones on camera. Yeah, I guess you're other, right. I guess you're right. Lots and lots yeah. of things. You've got to have some faith in society that we figure this out. We come up with norms and we do it. And that's the problem is that even before anybody has the damn glasses, some of these people are screaming 
bloody you, murder about it, and it's and it's it's it's. Do you remember when talking on your cell phone was I, considered really and, rude? Do you remember that? Yeah. When now everybody talks on cell phone. Yeah. That was just yeah. the height of rudeness. <laughs> Uh, well, I have been seeing some of the videos coming out through glass, and uh, they're just like they make you kind of they make me like a little bit a little bit nauseous. A guy uh, published a video of he, he like dunking a basketball wearing glass, which was really cool, but it was also just like oh, I feel a little sick yeah. because it's just so Here's jerky. It's like Blair Witch. If you're wearing glass, you're never gonna nod again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna if you're recording anyway. Video. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I watched the but one even in the demo. Of the guy with, uh, I think it was his son, and he was going around in a circle, and I had the same feeling as you, Gina. I can't even yeah. watch, you know, yeah. movie handheld handicam movies where they go around in circles. It just makes yeah. it doesn't make great video. The sound, if you're more than two <coughs> feet away, the sound is bad. Uh, somebody went Mashable, or I think it was Mashable, went on Today Show. Oh, here's Matt. Yeah, here's Lance Ulanoff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm just annoyed by all the journalists who've got it. <laughs> and, and the, you know the videos, and I did. It's not a it great just video. It irritates me. But one thing that there, there's a there's a Bradley Horowitz piece is really good where he where he speculates about a lot of possible uses. Like we can look at the Eiffel Tower and see others, uh, virtual graffiti on it or things like that. And he said, imagine if you're in a crowd and suddenly there's a whole bunch of glass there and people everybody turns at the same time. Then you're going to believe that there's something going on there where you're looking. Well, yeah. That same thing if somebody everybody turns their head at the same time. That's well, Tim, we're looking if you're watching the video of Tim Stevens of Engadget uh, doing his review. Uh, he we're gonna have is Tim gonna uh, for sure on Twit? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're gonna have Tim and Scoble on Twit on Sunday, uh, presumably both wearing their glass. Well, you're oh, you're gonna, gonna be, be a glass fest. I'm jealous. I'm gonna be so jealous. Yeah. I have to admit, you know, when I was in Italy looking at things, I wish if I had had something that would pop yeah, up a little, good point. you know, Wikipedia entry or some something to tell me. Even just a tiny bit of history about something, uh, that would be worth it. That's field trip. I, I, I'm i surprised yeah. they haven't ported field trip to glass. That seems like what field trip was invented for. Oh, yeah. They, that's Ooh. a no-brainer. That's definitely going to happen. Yeah. For sure. I think still photos is uh, will, will be maybe a better use. I don't, I don't think that this set a lot of moving video is going to no. be great. Yeah, I mean, Although, first person... I mean, I want to go. I want to go like paraglidding first thing and wear glasses. Sure. You know, and see. <laughs> like you know, that, that'll, stuff. that'll be really fun. You know. Don't show that to me. I, I can't stand heights, as you know. Bridges and heights. <laughs> I don't like them both. Oh, it's bridges and heights. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's, it's related. <laughs> yeah. Really. The same thing. Yeah. Uh, I, I was at a party the other night, and you know, the only few times I've seen people with glass, it's people who have to wear them in addition to their eyeglasses. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm worried about. Well, you problem. and I have glasses. What are we going to do, Jeff? It's a real problem. And by the way, that your, your little fix for the men's room, you're going to miss the urinal with your glasses on top. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, Scoble had, had, had removed glass but had his glasses on underneath. Is that how it works now? Do you put glass, you put glass yeah, on you top? Yeah, you put glass over, I think. That's going to mm -hmm. be dorky. That's as bad it's as really 3D, dorky. It's really 3D a glasses. Problem. They, they should have thought of this. There's too many young people at Google who don't have bad eyes yet. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. It's, that's actually really a really wanna, good I've example never done of contacts. You wear Maybe contacts it comes with laser treatment. I don't. No, I don't wear it. contacts. Yeah, I can wear my contacts, but I still. I don't. Uh, anyway, whatever. <laughs> now, now I can't oh, talk about salty. glass because I'm going to sound it. like I'm jealous because I am. <laughs> we got to get Leo his. Uh, that's well, all right. Google, was, Google doesn't like me. It's okay. I don't care. There Just was a rumor they were working with Warby Parker. Right. On. On Warby versions, right, which would have uh, you know your your uh, prescription lenses in there. Mm -hmm. They do. It looks like they come with sunglasses, right? There's come with a yeah. pop-in sunglasses. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go to my eyeglass guy and say how how ridiculous is the price to make lenses that will fit on? Wow, you are dedicated. <laughs> well, I think it's gonna be ridiculous. My wife will shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely are. You're dedicated. Well, film it when she shoots you. All right, we're gonna take a break. Come back. We got the. Uh, <laughs> Well, you know, that's, yeah, by the way, where the Scoble in the shower came from is not from glass. He was I don't think he was looking in the mirror. I think his wife, Miriam, took that picture. He was. There's her photo credit is somewhere. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Did. So blame his wife. There's the also a picture hardy. of really Leo, while, while you got it there. It's on the rundown. There's the picture of him in the shower. The next one down is him with the warm afterglow. Right. Oh, Show dear. I don't know if I want to. <laughs> it's unfortunate. That's in a, in a, in a robe. And yeah. then the next picture down on the rundown is the one you want to show. Really? Yeah, but you do. If you're not, if you're not. It's okay. It's okay, Leo. It's I wouldn't right. need to astray. It's the new Goatsy. We decided on uh, on Sunday that this is the new Goatsy is Robert in the shower. <laughs>
Oh, there's Miriam not in the shower. There you go. Oh, no, it's not shower. Miriam. Who is that? That's somebody else. That's one of the, looks like it's one that's of the glass. Uh, saying, those if you're you going to wear your glass in the shower, make sure you bring an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's one of the marketing uh, glass marketing folks at Google. Oh, really? Oh, okay. That's cool. So I don't know. I'm just, you know, I, just, I don't know. I'm just, uh, we'll see. You can't, I think you have, I think last, as I said last week, is one of those things you have to use to, to understand. So I'm just going to reserve judgment. Like like a pixel. You got to use it for No, I use the pixel and I understand it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I do understand it, Jeff. Our show today brought to, we're going to come back with a change log, Gina. Prepare your trumpets. Got it. Get the trumpets oiled up. Up for sure, ready. <laughs> Empty the spit valve. Our show today brought to you by Hover.com. Hover is the way to do domain registration. Uh, as soon as Hover came out, and this is a creation of two cows, they've been doing a um, domain registration for a long time, but they said, we got to make it clean, we got to make it modern, we got to make it simple. So they created Hover.com as kind of the new, the modern way to register a domain name. Great management tools. They do not sell hosting. They, they really, they, they, it's a domain name registrar. If you go to uh, our website, which is hover.com slash twig, you can get 10% off your first domain registration. If you haven't used them, you might want to just try it. I moved, I used their concierge service to move everything over uh, to cover.com automatically. Uh, why would you want to register a domain name? Well, it's more professional. Certainly, if you have a website for your business, it should be yourbusiness.com or if you can't get .com, and nowadays a lot of people can't, .net is a very good choice. Hover has that. They also have uh, .org, uh, .tv, .pro, .mobi, .biz, .ca, .asia, .us, .uk. They have a lot of uh, top-level domains, those are called. But I think .net is a very cool. I have leolaport.net. Somebody has leolaport.com. Domains start at $15. And by the way, that includes who is privacy. Most of the other guys will charge you. They'll upsell you. In fact, that's one of the problems I have with a lot of those other guys is you can't get out of there. You can't get to your uh, checkout without clicking 100 different boxes saying, no, I don't want that. No, I don't want that. No, I don't want that. You do want who is privacy. That means they can't use your who is record to look up your home address, your home phone number, uh, or your business address or phone number. Who is privacy is automatic with each and every Hover domain. It's great for uh, setting up email. I really like that. In fact, uh, I think that's something everybody should do is have their own domain name and have their email forwarded to it and then use it to forward it to a, dom a mail server. So you could still use Gmail or Yahoo or whoever you want to use, but you don't expose that address to the public. So if you decide to move on, no problem. Your address does not change. Uh, great for a permanent email address. I can think of lots of ways you could use Hover.com, but why don't you try it right now? Their concierge service is very affordable. I think $25 for all your domains. They'll charge you 10 bucks for a new domain or a transfer, but that gives you a whole year of, uh, of uh, the domain renewal. So that's a good deal as well. Hover.com slash twig is our special address for 10% off or use the offer code TWIG. And one of the things I really like, they have great customer service. Their customer service reps are empowered to help you. And that's why they won't put you on hold. They won't transfer you. When you call during business hours, you'll get a live rep and you will get your problem resolved. It's just great. Simplify domain name, name management. If you're registering domain names, I invite you to consider Hover. From now on, I moved all my stuff over there. Really great. Hover.com slash twig for 10% off your first new domain names. It is time, ladies and gentlemen, for Gina Trapani and our Google Change Log. The Google Change Log. <laughs> What's new at Google? <laughs> <laughs> Big launch this week was Google Now for iOS. Uh, did you guys see this? Yeah, it's not quite as um, functional as the one for Android. It actually comes packaged with the Google Search app for iOS, for iPhone and iPad. Uh, but it includes things like traffic updates based on your calendar or sports scores based on your location. It seems it to have the same cards for me that I would get on my Android device. It does. It yeah. does. What's well, missing certain things like nearby events, oh, um, yeah, activity summary, yeah. the boarding passes. I, I don't think that it has quite the hooks into your Gmail account right. that maybe now for, uh, for Android does. But nice to see and you and you also have to launch the the Google search app in order to see your cards versus you know launch it from the home screen the way we can on Android 
Uh, still love to see Google now sort of get see you know launching to other platforms. I saw a couple of Android blogs saying, "Oh, Google now should have stayed Android only because it's a differentiating feature." Agwash, I say, love to see Google now uh, on iOS, and I'd love to see it in Chrome too. Hopefully, it'll come to Chrome as well. Hogwash says Gina. Hogwash. 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 <laughs> that's, that's Gina's invitation of Dvorak. This is nasty. <laughs> Hogwash. Hogwash. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, so Google Web Fonts, for, well, Google Fonts, which was formerly Google Web Fonts, uh, is now available for desktop use. Uh, starting today, you can download web, Google Fonts for offline access on your desktop. There's a there's a tool. You have to download a tool from Monotype that basically downloads the fonts and syncs them to your de desktop. So this kind of runs in the background on your on your Windows or Mac uh, device and just lets you lets you use Google Fonts in uh, offline and in your desktop awesome. applications as well. Yeah, I really like Google Fonts. I there's, use them on my, my website. But like more than 300 fonts, right? Yeah, yeah, there are. And while you're of there, fonts, while right. you're there, I got a question. Yeah. So, being that I live La Vida Google, and uh, I had a whole big, big document, university document, I had to print out this week. So I, I had it at home, and had it all formatted and everything else. I had it on my Pixel. Then when I switched over to a Mac because it was hooked up to the printer um, mm -hmm. that I already had configured, uh, still in Google Docs, the formatting changed. Is that because so it uses the local fonts? The formatting or the typography? The typography specifically? The, like the, the fonts the, the were different? Spacing, you know, page breaks were off and things like that because because it was still Times New Roman on both, same 12 on both, but it was it was different. Hmm. And this was this was a Google Doc, like inside your browser? It's Very strange. Google Doc inside the browser. So it was like it was using, I couldn't figure out why, but it doesn't use local fonts, right? It uses Google fonts. Yeah, yeah, that should use Google well, Fonts. And that doesn't sound like a font, it doesn't sound like a typography issue. It just sounds like a like sp line spacing or, you know, mm -hmm. page break issue. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I mean, if, if it, it was a local document where you're using like different versions of Word, I would say, oh, well, no, no, it no, just no, no. interpreted would, the font. Would, what's that you ask? Use what? What, <laughs> <laughs> what an odd name for a that, product. We need a Ricky Martin, live in La Vida Google theme for you. <laughs> yeah. That's what you do. That's what you do. I don't, I, I'm stumped on that one. Oh, okay. I don't know why that would happen. Sorry about that, Jeff. No, 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 no. I was, just thought it was odd. It was an odd way to understand how, how docs work. That's all. I mean, it was fine. Yeah. Yeah. It, it looks like there's over 600 of these Google fonts. Wow. Videos. It's quite wow. a few. They've expanded it quite a bit. Are, is it just the monotype fonts I can get or can I get them all? Or, or the... I, I believe it, it there's a... Because monotype's a doing this downloader, right? Yeah, Monotype yeah. is doing the downloader. And no, they're the Google font. So they they, they they actually, yeah, they, they teamed up with Monotype to, to offer. You, and using the tool I downloaded earlier, you can you can sign a Monotype and get their fonts or the Google fonts are just free right there. That's a really great deal. Yeah, it's really nice. Grumpy Wizard. What is this? Is this the new, the quick angry fox jumps over the lazy dog? <laughs> Grumpy Wizards make toxic brew for the evil queen and Jack. Yes. Oh, that, that's that's way better. It's a new quick brown fox jumps over I the lazy dog. I like it. Yeah. 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 Grumpy wizards make toxic brew for the evil queen and Jack. Did you say angry fox? Yeah. The, well, he did. The, it's the quick I, brown it's fox. Brown, it's brown, not angry? Yeah. It's, I'm angry. Leo's jumps over the lazy I'm dog. I'm still angry over that. Angry about glass. <laughs> All I angry, I'm glass, glass angry. Glass angry. <laughs> Google uh, also this week uh, launched a new Chrome extension. Actually, this this might have been related to your problem, uh, Jeff. There's a new Chrome Office Viewer Chrome extension that mm. renders Word, Excel, and PowerPoint fi files directly in your browser. Right. So right now, if you open up uh, a Word, Excel, PowerPoint file, it'll open in a drive-based viewer. But you can install this um, this Chrome Office Viewer, which is which is still in beta, and you actually have to be running the Chrome beta or be on a Chromebook. This is actually, I guess, by default. Installed on Chromebook right now. It actually wouldn't now. let me install it before. Oh, it wouldn't let you install it on your desktop or, or yeah, your Chromebook. The, the, on my Chromebook. Give me the name of it again. Chrome Office Viewer. It said I couldn't do it on this machine, but I I, I, I then switched to um, the beta version of Chrome. Maybe that was. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. So Google says this, this. This. Nope. There we go. Oh, the TPS report. That's nice. 
Yes. <laughs> little, a little, a little tip of the hat to uh, office space. A office space. Yeah, a little Mike Judge going on there. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Google says that the advantage to using this plugin over Drive is that it will um, help protect you against malware uh, because the files open up in kind of a specialized sandbox. Um, and they say, quote, to impede attackers who use compromised office files to try to steal private information or monitor your activities, <laughs> which is kind of funny. There, there's. I feel like that's a, a an underhanded accusation of Microsoft for trying yeah, to of do course. the things that not Google, so, that Google not, yeah, not even underhanded. <laughs> it's <blatant. Pretty> clear. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing underhanded about that. So uh, speaking of Google Drive, the plusification of everything continues into Drive. Uh, I'm actually not seeing this change in our Twig rundown document, but I saw it this morning at another doc. You'll see now uh, there's a side there's a sidebar chat on Google Docs. Well, those are now tied to your Google Plus account. So you'll see your Google Plus icons, and if you mouse over the icon, you can follow someone or add someone to your circles. This is right inside Drive. You can start a group chat, kind of like what we do the group chat uh, in the sidebar now, but it's just just a little bit little bit more plusified. Is this a touch of wave? Is it is it attached to wave? A touch of or was wave. Was it a touch of well, wave? Sort of wave. Yeah, a little bit. It kind of is. It's kind of like it, it is. It's kind of like drives. Um, you know, updates as you as you type, which is very wave like. And now it's got Google Plus users uh, in there, which uh, so so you can add to your circles and you can start a chat. So yeah, it is kind of wavy because it's that that chat while you co collaborate on a document. Neato. Um, and there's a. New new look for anonymous users. This is interesting. Anonymous users will get uh, a random like animal icon. You can see <laughs> <up in school. laughs> the tip of the hat to O'Reilly there. Yeah, it does. It looks that way, right? Is there yeah. a tarsier in there? Doesn't no, but like I, I've got the. Uh, if you look at my uh, screen chat, I think I have the. Maybe we could use this one. The quick brown fox jumping over a lazy <laughs> dog. Here, let me dog. just. Well, that dog. Yeah. That dog is up, right? Wait a minute. No, there's a picture that he's. Where's the motion? Where's the video? Yeah. It's supposed to move. There you go. Right, now you got it. Click. There we go. Daily. Mo oh, there we go. There, there you go. Here it is. Here's gonna. This is a quick fox. He's okay. going to. He's no, can't oh. quite do it. Well, let oh. me try again, fox. Try one more time. There, there's that lazy dog. Do you think they trained he's him to do this? There quick. we go. There okay. Go. Oh, nice. <laughs> and he's nice. quickly out of there. That I did it, and I'm done. Did it, and I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sorry, didn't uh, mean to interrupt. No, 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 that's okay. That's okay. Last change log item: Google has announced that app activities are coming to search. So a couple weeks ago, we and actually I think we had a couple of Googlers on to talk about this. That Google uh, had opened up Google Sign In for apps. So like if you're using Fandango for example on your phone, you can sign in with your Google Plus account. Well, Google really wants developers to use those services because then Google can collect information about usage on apps, and then they're going to show stats about that usage in in their search uh, search results. So if you so soon this hasn't rolled out yet, but if you search for a site or an app on google.com and that app has integrated with the Google Plus sign in, uh, you'll see popular and aggregate user activity in the right of the search results in that in that knowledge graph area. So if you search for say Fandango for example, you'll see the top movies among Google users. Oh, neat. Uh, yeah, That's yeah. So they're smart. rolling out this feature in desktop search the next over the next couple of weeks. They're starting with limited number of music and movie apps. So Deezer, Fandango, Flickster, Slacker Radio, Songza, SoundCloud, TuneIn. Uh, but they're going to be adding more apps over time as more apps uh, integrate this. My, my guess is that at Google I.O., they're going to be pushing this hard on developers because they want developers to be using this sign-in because this, this makes search results better. Yeah, there's. I looked at the schedule for Google I.O. There's lots and lots of sign-in sessions. Mm -hmm. Schedule's up. Mm -hmm. I put it on the, on the rundown. Oh, cool. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And that's all I got for the change log. <laughs> that's my signal to you, Chad, now. I just do this, and you're supposed to know that's the timpani. <laughs> dum, dum, dum. Yeah, it makes sense. Google, uh, you know, it's a very clear strategy with Google Plus and the Google sign-in collecting signals. Mm -hmm. And the more, the Bingo. better. Yep. Integrated, one experience, all tied back into your Google Plus uh, profile, right? One, one man's creepy scroogling is another man's collecting signals. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Uh, Comex, fired at Apple, working for Google. Who is super hacker Comex? Let's ask our own super hacker, Gina. Who is Comex? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't he's know the guy. The story. He's the guy who uh, first, I think, was first rooted the iPhone. Oh. Apple hired him as an intern, a college kid, 
Apple hired him as an intern, but then evidently he didn't respond to an email in time, and they they axed his intern. Oh. Google said, "Come here." He uh, wrote "Jailbreak Me" with the hacking tools for iPhone and iPad. Nicholas Allegra is his real name. He's and, not going to uh, he's not going to be on Android because he doesn't like Android. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh, did he say that? He he, he was yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> I never liked it enough to want to hack it, he said. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I mean, or you could say it doesn't really need to be need to be hacked, but okay. Uh, yeah. That's the answer, right, Gina? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, apparently. This kid's got a promising future. Yeah. Um, I mean, people were amazed that he, when, when Jailbreak 3, Jailbreak Me 3 was released, apparently, according to Forbes, the information security community was baffled that a teenager had single handedly unlocked the most tightly restricted consumer operating system in the world. Charlie Miller, who's famous for hacking Apple, said he was totally blown away. Uh, Apple, this is all, this this copy is hysterical. Fellow Apple hacker Dino Daidzovi <laughs> later commented to another reporter Allegra seemed to be from the future. <laughs> Within two months, he was given an internship at Apple, but a year later, he was suddenly let go for failing to respond to an email that would have extended his employment. I love that. He didn't respond to an email. I'm busy. He didn't respond so to an email. I'm he's busy. busy. He's busy. Hey, would you like to keep your job? I'm busy, man. Responded. So now he's uh, interning at Google. I wonder if he's doing summer code stuff or... Is he checking his email more regularly? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think... It's, a, we, it's, that's, it's just bizarre that they, they'd fire because you didn't answer to your email. Well, I guess they're saying, would you like to that stick around? And he didn't respond. That'd be very but, apt you know, to me. Maybe it would yeah. You don't care culture. enough to do the Apple thing. Well, that's a funny to question because I recently sent an email to one of our employees with exactly the same <laughs> question. And you know what? <laughs> Seriously, this person did not respond. So what do I do? Tell him to go work at Google. This is this is my favorite part of this Forbes story. <laughs> he said, after the missed deadline, the offer, this was to intern at, or to be employed at Apple, was permanently rescinded. And this is, this is a quote. I wasn't too happy about it, but it didn't seem like I was able to fix it, he told me at the time. So so this kid can jailbreak <laughs> iPhones yeah. and iPads, but he doesn't have the, the, <laughs> the social skills or the maturity to be able to go to the person who employed no, him I successfully and get them it. to change his mind and be able to apologize for a missed email. Yeah, like so there we go i, I, I mean i have it. great respect for his technical chops but <laughs> that's pretty typical though gina isn't it yeah it is and no very typical but it's just interesting that he said i wasn't able to fix it like as if it were a bug in the system right that they let yeah. him go because I, he missed an email that he it. was not able to fix i found a trouble <laughs> ticket but i just uh we couldn't figure it out it wasn't it won't fix won't fix <laughs> i couldn't root the apple uh management structure <laughs> i don't understand it it's so so if you're if you're employee person leo i came to you and said look i'm really sorry i missed your email i yeah, had a tough i'd week. fix it I, can, you would fix it <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh anyway, sorry okay. but he is an intern interns that's different there and, 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 and this is an internship at Google as well and yeah. wouldn't someone have said let's try a little harder than sending an email well you got to think now know. that there's an article about it in forbes that somebody at apple knows about it you think mm. they would have picked up pick up the phone Pick if the they phone, wanted to employ him. Go buy yeah. his office, maybe. I don't know. Well, they have a lot of it. There's a lot of interns. You saw the movie. Sure. It's sure. a busy. Actually, we have. What happened to that movie? The one, one with the, the uh, where Vince which Vaughn intern. That was the Google. Google. The Google. They went to Google to intern, yeah. not yeah. Apple. Well, yeah. but whatever oh, happened to that movie? It? Oh, I think it must have been so bad they never released it. Let's Google it. Uh, yeah, direct to the <laughs> internet. It's, it's, it's in a it's in a bin somewhere with the Ashton Kutcher Steve Jobs movie just waiting to be released someday. Is that isn't that uh, going to get released at some point? It's supposed to. Mm -hmm. yeah. They showed it at a film festival at Sundance, I think, and Vince then it Bono. mysteriously disappeared. <laughs> uh, June seventh, it comes out. Okay, we, we okay. haven't missed it. Not the not the Ashton Kutcher, the uh, the Vince Vaughn. I uh, would love to. That would be a twig uh, uh, field trip. Should we maybe. do a field trip and uh, and go watch it somewhere? <laughs> we had fun. I'll go watch it. What's it called? <laughs> Is it the interns? Something like that. Uh, I'm looking for it. Something like that. The internship. The internship. The internship. Let's all yep. go watch it with glass and then post our videos, our shaky head yes. videos on the internet. How about that? Yes. The <laughs> hangout. Yeah. Yeah. And then well, the, let's share it on video. Google Drive so everyone else can watch our experience. <laughs> Yeah, we could have a hangout. There it is, the internship, 2013, Owen Wilson, Vince Vaughn. Oh, they're rocking the John Google Goodman. logo typography and the, yeah, and the colors. Yeah, yeah. 
Wow, that's it, the from the trailer. It's going to be god awful. <laughs> Seriously, get ready. No tomatoes at all. So uh, Google uh, last year hired Ray Kurzweil, another person. Apparently, he got the email. <laughs> and responded to it. Um, I guess yesterday he moderated a live Google Hangout that was uh, tied to the Will Smith uh, movie After Earth. I think that was a week ago yesterday, uh, Tuesday, actually. Um, so he talked a little bit to uh, Wired Magazine about uh, the movie but also uh, about predicting the future. And they asked him, they said, you predicted search engines. Yes, I wrote about that in the 1980s. <laughs> but did you predict you'd be working for Google? <laughs> well, that's the kind of thing you can't predict. <laughs> <laughs> what are you working on at Google? My mission at Google, develop natural language understanding in collaboration with other researchers at Google. Search has moved beyond finding keywords. It still doesn't read all those billion of web pages and book pages for semantic content. So it's more than just uh, indexing, right? It's understanding. And when that happens, we'll have Skynet. If your system really understood complex natural language, would you argue that it's conscious? Yes, says Ray Kurzweil. He said, I have a consistent date of 2029 for that vision. So he's working towards a singularity. And where better to do that than Google? But it's interesting. He's not just talking about it being smart. He says this means emotional intelligence, being funny, being sexy. Uh, Be, wait a minute. Being funny, I get. Being sexy? That's what he says. Hi, I'm Google. I'm here to <laughs> give you a happy ending. I really want actually, my search engine to seduce me. No, no, <laughs> I don't. Right no, 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 no. I'm, I'm afraid. I feel to look like Robert Scoble in the shower. Exactly. That's the problem. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. I, you there and you I, go. Jeffrey, we were going there. We we're going there. Sorry, <laughs> you were faster. <laughs> wow. I think if you're gonna be if sexy, Google Bing has a better sexy. shot at it than Google. Just a what better was that, verb. That search engine with the woman. It was like an animated woman kind of standing yeah. there yeah. like talking to you. Mrs. Uh, Miss, uh, what's her name? Yeah. Miss Webster or something. Yeah, yeah, it was something like she that. She dissed that me a... big time. Oh. You could find that on YouTube when you search for my me name. Completely. I don't know why. It was a, it was a experiment by Microsoft. It was mm -hmm. not a, uh, it was never it was, intended. It was an improvement on a talking paperclip. Yeah. 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 Microsoft. Bob. Her name was Miss something. This is... This is Leo. I think you could probably find it, Chad, on YouTube. Because uh, uh, we did this on... Uh, uh, I can't find it. Miss Cleo? Or no, Miss Dewey. That was it. Miss oh, Dewey. Yeah, that sounds right. Miss yeah. Dewey. Chat room to the rescue once again. I, I, there are so many great search results for Leo Laporte. This is, by the way. Uh, yeah. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> I diss, we diss, you all diss. Here's Ms. Dewey. Wait a minute, let me... Yes, there she is. There she is. There she is. This, let me see if I can turn up the sound. I've got Windows 8, so as you might expect it's a little bit difficult, but let me see. But you hold on to that machine. Well, no. I. You know what? I was going to replace it with a Mac, but then I think they're going to do new ones. Here's Miss Dewey. Oh, there's no sound. Wait a minute. Ladies and... Gentlemen, oh, Lord. in oh, this corner, we This is not sexy. Okay, let's find no, another. That's not sexy. <laughs> uh, here we go. Leo Laporte gets pwned by search engine. How about yeah. that? Because they are always trying to compete with Google in the future. Yeah, so not in their really, own game. Exactly. They're yeah. trying to jump ahead of Google mm -hmm. and... Uh, See, you know, kind of come up with their own idea of what the, the future will be. Search for me. Let's just see. Okay. I just, I, well, I, you know, I know that sounds vain, but I know what the search <laughs> results should be for my own exactly. name. Exactly. Look at that. Sound. So she thinks for a while, for a little bit, and then... There's a reason why they call the TV the idiot box, and I think I found it. Oh! Oh, my God! Oh! <laughs> You're kidding! <laughs> that is horrible. Nice. Oh, Okay, well, at least See, I've, the, uh, I've been disrespected by uh, major corporations right since uh, 19, whatever, 93. Wow. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. That was a That's weird, classy. weird response. Miss Dewey. Okay. 
Yeah, it was more about attitude. But that's what I'm thinking if Ray Kurzweil gets to it. See, now it's making noise again. I'm going to turn down the noisemaker. See, I installed a chat engine that is now telling me that you've, you've, people are chatting at me. What a surprise. Can you not turn that off? Uh, I'm sure I can, but I'm busy. <sighs> Let's move along, shall we, to another story? What do you say? Do it. Uh, oh. Should we talk about I.O.? Should we <laughs> yeah, look just do something, please, because I'm stuck in, a, in Windows 8 hell. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the, the I.O.? I.O. is in two weeks, by the way. I'm totally... Completely excited. Is it that soon? So. Yes, yes, it's very soon. It's 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 awesome. The schedule just got released, and it looks like there's only going to be a single keynote on the first day. So oh, good hallelujah! Call. What time? Nine o'clock. Uh, Crossing looks like fingers. Nine, nine to twelve. Oh, and there'll be good a break. Lord. Okay. There will be a break, good. which I, I can't imagine that they're going to empty out that huge uh, that huge room to let people use the bathroom or whatever. I imagine it's just going to be a kind of stand up and stretch kind of break. We will uh, be uh, covering that live. Actually, it won't be we. It will be uh, Tom Merritt and crew because Gina, Jeff, and I will all three be at uh, the uh, keynote. Only one of us will be wearing a Google Glass. Uh, by then, you might have yours, Leah. Mm. What about yeah. you? Didn't you get one, Jeff? Oh, but I got yeah, it in, you might the, have in the uh, Kitty program. Well, so a lot of the people in the Kitty program got it Got it that way. <clears throat> Scoble got it that really? way. No, yeah. Scoble, Scoble was at I.O. He was at I.O.? I think so. Didn't he I have a low number in the in the glass thing? No, mm, I don't know. I have He's not scoped it. I'm pretty sure he tweeted it. Ooh. Anyway, yeah, Jeff, you might get yours. I mean, and actually, it would be it would be you could might, might be able to pick them up while we're I there. Want, so I, I want I want the picture because it's going to look just like the picture from the 50s of people with the red and green glasses. I want the picture right. of the entire keynote audience going like this with their Google Glass. Yeah, because that's yeah. what it's going to look like. And yes. it'll be just as uh, historic in a few years. Remember when uh, they did with the thing? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm sure not. that Google's going to ask everyone to turn off their Wi-Fi. Turn off your glass. <laughs> every single person in the room is going to have three devices on them which connect to the Wi-Fi. Oh, yeah. So one, one, of the, uh, one of the sessions at I.O. is uh, uh, how to avoid your warranty hacking Google Glass. <laughs> is it really? That's the name of the session? I love yeah. it. Yeah. Which means they're encouraging day it. Day two. Which yeah. means they're encouraging it. That's great. Which is smart. Good day two under the, uh, the, the, the uh, glass track. They should encourage hacking it, you, right? Leo, you have Definitely. to click on more topics, I think, on, on that chart you just had. Okay. That's all right. I, I believe you, Jeff. You're, they, uh, it probably works said, better on a pixel. Yeah. They said <laughs> you bet it does. There right, it is. Because glass. I already read it all. There's not a lot of There's only a few. There's four glass seminars. I'm surprised. Yeah. Hacking, avoiding your warning, hacking glass, building glass services with the Google Mirror API, fireside chat with the glass team, and then what does that say? Developing for glass. That's it. You'd think there'd be more, given how many sessions there are. Glass is just not that, uh, I mean, if you look, you know, I mean, look at Android. There should be a ton of sessions. There's Google Plus. And then go to, go to Plus, you'll see a lot of stuff, as you said earlier, that's about uh, using uh, Google Plus authentication. Yeah. Signing in with yeah. Google Plus. Yeah. That makes sense. Huh. I mean, honestly, Leo, they could have folded Glass into Android because, I mean, not, it is just, Android, not a lot of it? people have it. I mean, it is Android. Not a right. lot of people have it yet. Uh, One thing I so. didn't know from that I found out from the uh, Engadget review, which you showed briefly earlier, is that the Glass is another device so that your phone doesn't hook up with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, they said. Your phone has to uh, open up a, um, well, it is Wi-Fi, I guess, but it, but it opens up a, uh, a tethering session. A and so, right? Well, you have to use tethering. You have to use tethering from your phone to the glass, and oh. thus the guy said he's paying another twenty bucks a month to be able to tether. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't realize that. I thought the glass. I didn't either. That sucks. That really if, sucks. If you're tethering to your oh, so you have to tether to your phone in order to access. Your phone has to be in hotspot mode. Mm -hmm. well, that'll kill a battery said. fast. Well, I can't why, believe that. That's not right. It's Bluetooth. Just be able to. Yeah, it's why Bluetooth. would you just be able to connect is, to any Wi-Fi? This is also what Tim Stevens said in his review, is that you need to use the, the Bluetooth um, done internet thing. Oh, that's why it's Bluetooth. It's using uh, done. Okay, that's yeah. different. That's not the same as turning on hotspotting. Well, it is to some... But it's uh, using the internet accounts. access, yeah. That's the problem. That makes sense. Mobile accounts. By, like, like, I have an AT&T grandfathered uh, unlimited, and supposedly I'm not supposed to tether. Now, in fact, I can a little bit, but I don't want to do so much I get caught and thrown into AT&T jail. 
So it's Bluetooth dial-up networking. So it is Bluetooth connected, but it's internet act, but it has internet access through Bluetooth. That makes sense. It'd have to do that. That's the only way it could do the internet access. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Uh, they released a video, and I don't think I don't think it's actually in the rundown. They released a, a "How Glass Works" video. Actually, they didn't talk I about. It was under glass. So. Yeah, is it? Uh, let's see. It's like it's it's a minute long. We played it last night on Nail about Android, but it kind of shows how the touchpad works and how the UI, uh, how, how you switch between cards in the UI and what the UI looks like. It basically looks like like a horizontal Google Now. That's it. Yeah, there it is, Chad. Welcome to Glass. Here are the basics of how to use Glass. This is your touchpad. It runs from your temple to your ear. Tap the touchpad to wake up Glass. Oh. You should see the display above your line of sight. Adjust it to see everything. The home screen shows a clock. This is your timeline. It's a row of cards. Wow. Things to the left are happening now or coming up, like the weather. An Whoa! Flight, you can scroll through it. In your calendar. So that's Google Now. You can basically. tap on any card yes, to see exactly. more. Yes, exactly. That makes sense. Swipe huh? down anywhere yep. to go back to the timeline. Cards to the right of the home screen are from the past. For example, messages, videos, or photos. Tap on a photo to share it, and choose one of your friends. Swipe down to go back to standby and have fun exploring. Hmm. Yeah, so we were talking about this last night all about Android, and I was saying, like, oh, I didn't realize that there was going to be, there's so much motion, there's so much kind of temple rubbing. And then someone from, from Google tweeted at me and said, you, you can wake up glass by, t by tilting your head and saying, okay, glass. Uh, so you, you, don't, you don't have to be touching the touchpad. Um, so you, you can sort of do it with head gestures as well. Uh, but yeah, that, I feel like that was more information than we really have gotten in a while about what, what the UI actually yeah. looks like. Do you watch a TV show called One Tree Hill, Gina? No, I, I haven't. Mm. I've heard of it. Stars a woman named Sophia Bush. She's apparently dating Google's hottest hunk. According to Perez, I love this. According to Perez Hilton, Coachella's <laughs> hottest hitter, become? hipster. Well, let me just read you the. I, I have, I've never read Perez Hilton, but apparently it's. Uh, well, let me, Sophia Bush. Over she's the she's the star of the TV show. Sophia Bush is bedding down with a handsome new hottie, and we love it. The sultry sex a one tree. By the way, well, sex a s e x x x a y. One Tree Hill star recently went public with her latest love interest, and we have to admit. We are totes impressed. Google program <laughs> manager Dan Friedenberg is a handsome, smart, and he has a super steady, totally amazeballs job. Damn, girl, we don't suppose he has a brother, lols. Oh. Holy moly. Getting today in wow. Mountain View. I, you know, I... It, it, working for Google is a little bit of a celebrity. There was there was an episode of Veep recently where they said something like, "Oh, she showed up a little late." It's not like she has a job at Google or anything. Wow! Like, yeah, there's this like any perception Street of like street cred. You're a total, total rock star. That's pretty cool. Yes, I love that. You can't pay for that kind of. Uh... Kind yeah, this this fellow does look like a hot hunk, Perez Hilton worthy. <laughs> I don't know. really. No, I don't know. Is your type of guy. Look at him. <laughs> no. Mm -mm -mm. no. 31-year-old program director Dan Friedenberg is a hunk alicious. Mm, 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 girls, stand back. He's taken. He's wearing tomato-colored pants. I don't know about that. Those are pink. What's his name? Let's find his Google Plus feed. Those are pink. Those aren't tomato. Oh, pink? Even better. And they're, and they're skinny. They're skinny jeans. Skinny jeans. I, I like it. And, oh, a, yeah, and a tank top that says, Stop the pity. <laughs> I don't know what that means. And armbands. Yeah, just look at those armbands. They have been clubbing. Well, that, no, no, they're at Coachella. That's what you need to. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. sorry. The sweatband is just completely gratuitous. That's just because he's such a hunk, he might sweat all over his arms. Chuck the sneakers. The sneakers are good. He's wearing Converse. Yeah. yeah. All right. No, okay. those are vans. They're vans? All right. Yeah, that's fine. He's a skater. She's got a hole in her skirt. I guess she can't afford better, but that's okay. We are terrible. I'm adding him <laughs> into my circles right now. We are horrible people. We're horrible people for reading Perez Hill, number one. <laughs> number two. I, I suppose 
people have a comment on our appearance, so we, we can we can do it as well. But I just added Dan to my circles. He's on Google Plus. Oh, he's hunkalicious. Do you have any comment there on uh, the, anything? Did you say he's hooked mm -hmm. up with uh, Pre Hill? They, apparently, they've been in a uh, relationship for six months, according to Perez Hilton. Ooh. No, <laughs> there's the shirtless photo of him doing a triathlon. He's quite the athlete, but oh, I just love it. <sighs> Mark Andreessen says glass-assisted surgery is in the future. Mm. Not my future. For him? <laughs> By the no. way, my, my son is having his appendix out right now, Jeff Jarvis. I just oh, got... no. Is it, wow. Was it an emergency? Uh, well, he had pain this morning, and Jennifer brought him to the emergency room. And, uh, oh, wow. Yeah, so I guess, um, yeah. Arthroscopic? Yeah, isn't it laparoscopic or something nowadays? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, laparoscopic, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah it's not, the, the recovery is not bad. Uh, oh, wow. And you're here yeah. working, aren't you? Doing, well, yeah. I, you know, I've been getting urgent text messages throughout the show, but I'm... Good they caught it. Yeah. It's good yeah. they caught it. And, and yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, not when it's not uh, burst, as mine was, it's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, no, the white, they did the blood test. He's no white blood cells, so it's not burst, but it's hurting. So they got rid of it. Or getting rid of uh, it. Well, it's over. Uh, you know, that's it. Well, it was almost exactly a year ago when I had mine. Now. Yeah, yeah. I used you as a, you know, because you're the, you know. I said, well, Jeff, it, Jeff was like on the show the next day, so I yeah, knew, yeah. I knew it was. It's really, it'll be okay. Yeah. It'll be okay. Um, okay. Give, give him our best. I shall. Yeah. I shall. Uh, glass has already been jailbroken. That's good. Mm -hmm. Was it the kid? Was it the kid who? Uh, was it Comex? No. <laughs> 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 no, it was not. Hey, well, uh, well, it's, it's Android based. Try on glass. Uh, oh, this, this looks like uh, uh, it's Jay Freeman. It's, uh, yeah. Sorek. Sorek. He's wearing glass. It's city of guy. Now, that's a guy should have glass. The city of guy. Yeah. Absolutely. And what um, can you do with a jailbroken glass? You can or put other apps on it, right? So You can run apps directly on maybe. it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Glass, he says, runs Android 4.04, .04, of all things, mm. which is uh, ice cream sandwich, right? Mm. Kind of mm -hmm. old. It took me two hours while I was having dinner with friends at the time. Two hours. While he while was, was eating. eating while he was having dinner? <laughs> I'm yeah, eating and hacking. Dinner. Yeah. I, I, uh, I met Sark and hung a little bit with him at uh, food camp. He's a, he's a nice guy. He's obviously a very smart hacker. But, but let's just say this. He's never going to be in Paris Hilton. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think he's a good-looking man. <laughs> I date him. He's actually uh -oh. a lot of fun. Chat room's gonna go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't resist. Jeez, give me a break. I love. I mean, hey, anybody who says it took me two hours to jailbreak it while I was having dinner with friends is an is a winner in my book. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He got a, he's got a good-looking brain, that guy. Yeah. Uh, he he got it through the developer program. He says, I'm not sure what gaining root access might make possible. He can't use glass because he has he wears glasses. Um, so he says it makes focusing on the display painful for more than a few minutes at a time. Um, the other problem I've heard from people is people, I didn't, I didn't realize, people have contacts who are near and farsighted. One eye is near and one eye is far. What does that mean for how you deal with glass? Yeah, I, I think I won't be able to wear it. And, you know, given the... Because that's exactly a description of my, my vision problem. Given that uh, so many people wear spectacles in this world, I don't know what the... I Yeah, I well, again, this last night I was at this party for Berta, the German publisher, and a guy there had everybody's trying them on, and they're just putting them on over their glasses. Hmm. You look doubly ridiculous, but what the heck. Well, and see, that's Did what I work? wonder. If you put a lens in it, it'd have to be before... You'd have to... I don't know. No, the problem is what's right, Leo. It's a cutout. Right. Mm -hmm. That's probably you why they haven't done it yet. You can't change the focal length of... Focal length is evidently quite a bit out here. But you can't change that. Right. You can't adjust. Uh, Danny Sullivan's got it right. He says... Because uh, I compared Glass to the... Uh, as you remember, to the Segway. Yep. He says, no, it's not mm -hmm. the Segway. It's Gordon Gecko's cell phone. <laughs> That's yeah, a, I like that. I think that's actually yeah, right. Yeah, it's an apt. Yeah. Very apt. In the sure. movie Wall Street, Michael Douglas, Gordon Gecko carries... A brick cell phone is making a lot of calls. And it dated the movie. Funny, because the movie isn't dated in any other respect. But in that respect, it's hideously dated. Um, so what he's saying really is uh, glass. We're going to look back on this and say this is early early days, right? That it's... Uh, there's Gecko with his cell phone. That it's... Um, 
The difference, though, is that with Wall Street and and with cell phone, early cell phones, it sort of made you out to be, you know, um, well, a, a dick. Yeah, a dick. Whereas, well, I think that's what he's saying. That's exactly what he's saying. He, he, here's he's here's saying Danny's quote: screen. "Gecko was a jerk, whose jerkiness was only enhanced by his phone, an expensive status symbol of its time." Mm -hmm. and, and so people people will see this initially as only the wealthy, only the elite yeah. will have this. It's a you know kind of dicky thing. And then yeah, we favorite. start to see how useful it is, just as we did with cell phones. They That's become exactly. ubiquitous. And then it's like you're crazy if you don't have They're one. They're de-dicked. They're de-dickified. But I think in, in the, with cell phones it was dicks, whereas glass it's more nerds. I think there's a subtle... No, thing. dicky no, nerds. I uh, do dicky me a favor, Chad. Nerds, go, okay. to, go to white men wearing Google Glass. Exactly. Not Tumblr. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. This yeah, is, it's there. the techno-utopian, like lots of disposable income, you know, just someone who's wealthy and thinks okay. that, you know, needs yeah. to be connected all the time. So I, I do think that there's this... There is there's a nerd um, aspect to it, but right now there, it's like the very connected nerd. Connected meaning like access to and you know the Explorer program, right? And wealthy, yeah. right? There's definitely wealthy. Fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Hi, yeah, I'm wearing glasses. Keep yes. on scrolling. Yeah. There's some new ones since yeah. I was there this morning. Oh, Scott Lord. Heiferman on Twitter showed this one. There's Loic, Loic Lemur, ah, uh, Tim Stevens, program. Lance okay. Wilenoff. There it is. There it is. And there's Those Mark Andreessen. The and the, yeah, the yeah, that's the yeah, glass. That one is the middle guy. That's just. That's too much. Yeah. These guys look normal. Yeah. I, I, can, I can live with that them. Looks like Dave Warner. And then, wait, wait, go back. Go back to that. That's the old guy who's like <laughs> us. Is, is the glass. He's glass wearing glass over glasses. Right. So it's over. So well, it no, work, no he hasn't made it separately. Where's. This is, oh. Maybe he took the rest of. what? That's weird. The rest is missing. He's a Google. He's a Googler. So they they they, they uh, specially uh, crafted glass. Yes. So they took that one part and put it on and clipped it off. You know, I have to admit that doesn't look so bad. I mean, it's you're wearing well, glasses does. and you have a little thing on the top of it. The beard helps. I'll grow a beard. <laughs> I bet they'll have fashionable Warbies, you know, pretty soon. That was William Gibson. Was it? Yeah. That's cool. I bet he wore it for three seconds and said, get, Very get, cool. get this off. No, there's me. a story somewhere. He liked what it. He, he did? Yeah, yeah he I said he didn't Google want it. to, but right. he did. Creator of uh, Neuromancer and the cyberpunk movement, great sci-fi writer, who uh, is not necessarily a fan of technology. No, he's not at all. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Well, you know, it, you notice it's getting more uh, mainstream as we go down the page. No, oh, there's Joshua Topolsky. Yeah, there's just, oh, and, and there's the dreaded Scoble picture. Is, is, yeah. Okay, there, there, we, are, there we go. Okay. I'm going to have to overcome that one. Oh, uh, that's fun. I, you know, th these people look more normal, so I don't, I don't think it's so. Uh, yeah, I want to see LeVar Burton wearing them. Yeah. So where's Jordy LaForge's glass? That's Maybe the first guy I'd give glass to. got to happen. Come that's on, marketing. Happen. Yeah. Get on it. We're going to take a break. Let's see. Uh, any other big stories before we move on? Uh, Google has made it easier to turn its pixels into highly expensive kiosks. No. No takers? Well, any Chromebook. Any Chromebook. Any Chromebook. Any Chromebook. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you want a Even touch those screen. nice, inexpensive ones. Nah, you want to use a pixel because you want the touch, right? No, you don't want all those greasy fingers on it. <laughs> uh Android 4.3 is still going to be named Jelly Bean, according to Android Police. Yeah, this is kind of yeah, this is kind of disappointing. It's possible, and Android Police did some investigative work. It's possible that we're going to see Android 4.3 in two weeks at I/O and not Key Lime Pie. Yep, I think that's quite. Just possible. a little bit. Of, I don't know. It's a little bit of a bummer. As a developer, I was like, I wanted, I wanted the next, the next right. letter. Uh, but uh, apparently, Jelly Beans 4.3 is in testing right now. There's a build in testing right now, and we're looking at I/O in two weeks. So uh, it, it looks like that's going to be the next release. Maybe they'll preview Key Lime Pie though at, at I/O, maybe, and not release it. Yeah. But uh, there is a build kind of in the works right now, Jelly Beans. So. And if you yeah, were there's... Thorsten Hines, CEO of BlackBerry, that's pretty amazing. Would you? Uh, would how would you feel? <laughs> <laughs> about uh, the future of uh, mobile technology. We're going to have to sit through an ad here, it looks like, before we can see. I want to see what he really said. Thorsten that Hines. Could, needs help. Do you have it? Do you have it on there? Should I turn it up? It sounds like somebody who's so, on Gilligan's Island. So, this is the, yeah, the, he actually doesn't, he doesn't uh, talk say about what he said he would you've been, say. You've been 
debuting it here here in Hollywood. Right. No, he's talking about the the the, the Q10. Uh, Q10, and and not about okay. tablets. Okay. Here. But he, according to somebody, and I don't know if he said this or not, he th Bloomberg thought that said he did. Bloomberg said he says in f this is the quote. In five years, I don't think there'll be a reason to have a tablet anymore. Maybe a big screen in your workplace, but not a tablet as such. Tablets themselves are not a good business model. Maybe I'd say that if I were BlackBerry. He, they, they put out the playbook, which was a great failure. Yeah. Um, I guess his point being what? That you're going to use phones instead of ta in lieu of tablets. Or other or types glass. of screens. Or glass. Maybe or smartwatches. He may not be yeah. wrong. He may not be wrong. Or just a big touch panel. Yeah, I use the only thing I use my my tablet for is to watch movies when I'm on the road in the train or something. That's See, pretty it's much it. To I, read. I, I'm sorry, I read the New York Times on it every day. Better for reading. I read books. Yes, yep, read books. Yeah, that's right. I keep on adding up. Yeah, I do a lot of things. The problem is that it, my my Nexus Seven, of course, I, I got the cheap one, so it's not internet connected. Uh, so that probably has yeah. an impact on my use. Chipotle been banned in East Chester, New York. It I'm isn't sorry. That I, you could guess where that what? one came from. <laughs> yes. What? <laughs> Why? Uh, I think uh, um, uh, real estate snobbery, actually. Uh, we don't want anything like that in East Chester. Uh. So we don't believe in that kind of thing. We don't have a Taco <laughs> Bell either. Dig finds 40% of respondents willing to pay for a Google Reader replacement. Dig, of course... Said they were going to do a replacement, uh, part well, of beta works. And I always dubious about uh, supposed uh, surveys about willingness to pay. Yeah, because they they're willing to answer a survey. That's what exactly. That's what that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't base my financial model on that. Mm -hmm. Sure, I'll pay. Hey, chat room. How many of you would pay for Twig? Yeah, no, we don't ask them that. <laughs> don't, yeah. don't ask them that. That, don't that, could, be, that could be crushing. Yeah. <laughs> None of us. Be nice, Jack. No, Benny. Uh, now, yes, 40% said yes, but that means 60% said no. Um, and none of those people will pay. Well, here's the numbers for the New York Times. If you round up, it has approximately uh, almost 60 million uh, unique users, of whom about 3 million hit the wall, and of whom 600,000... Uh, paid pure only digital subscription. That's about right. Yeah. One percent. That sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, what apparently BetaWorks is thinking uh, is that they don't want to do a ad based version. They'd like to do a paid version. Uh, they it says free products on the internet don't have a great track record. We need to build a product people can rely on and trust will always be there for them. I think there's a move in that direction among a number of uh, you know that's Pinboard. That's what they said. We're not going to do delicious. We're going to charge you. Yeah. Um, how well is that working? I don't know. And it could be, you know, it could be a good business, but it's going to be a very small business. Very. As long as people, here's, but you build in the profit, right? I mean, it's like Twit. We not, we're not huge. Well, no, there's but, a market. Here's what always was forgotten. And I know this from my days in the magazine business. There's a subscriber acquisition cost uh, and there's churn. Right. right. And right. so you've got to have some, you need a critical mass and that means you've got a marketing cost and it's a large marketing cost. Right. Good point. When, 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 when magazines... When I was at, at, at when I started EW, our subscriber acquisition cost was running twenty five bucks to acquire a subscriber, and we you know we charge you very little. We'd make it on the third or fourth year of the subscription, uh, and that's how it works. When I was at Delphi, subscriber acquisition cost was running about a hundred dollars. I'm sure it was the same for AOL and the other uh, early online yeah. services. Very expensive. Yeah, those, 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 those free discs cost some. Exactly. Um, good point. Although nowadays, because of the internet, I think customer acquisition costs must be a lot lower. They've got the name. Um, I know. I don't know. I mean, if they get beta works. Well, they've got the name Dig, and they also bought Instapaper from Marco last week. Um, I mean, I, I love the guys at BetaWorks. Let me be clear here, but I, but I think that that if you want to get to some critical mass of size, right? Okay. Some um, you know, there's a, a posturous replacement. Uh, yesterday, Posturus closed down. Twitter bought them. Thank you, Twitter. Uh, I loved it as a blogging service, but a, but the two of the founders started something called Post Haven. They said, we're just going to charge you five bucks a month. That way we know we're covering our costs and we can guarantee you this will never go down. That's a good idea. Yeah. I thought it was Posturus. Posturus, Posturus. Right. It's dead okay. now. It doesn't really matter. You don't okay. have to It doesn't work. matter anymore. <laughs> you can call it whatever you want. You call it whatever you want. It still doesn't work. Um,
But uh, posthaven.com, well, well, it's too late, I guess. Well, it would have imported your posterous data. It's it's post posterous. Post posterous. I, I did it. That is a good rationale for charging, though. Right. I mean, that you. It was you know, a free service, didn't make pay. it. Twitter right. bought us. And so you don't have to worry about someone, you know, failing or. Because you pay. Well, you well no, wait, 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 wait. But if, if not enough people buy it and you're committed and you've got fixed costs for servers or whatever. Um, well, I think if you if a thousand people pay five bucks, that's going to pay for what you need. Um, but there's again, I go back. I'm sorry, but there's churn, right? So, so what's what's it called? What was the uh, Twitter alternative app? App. app. Net. Net. Right? And, right, and nice people, and I went ahead and paid the money, and it all the same. I I didn't use it, and I couldn't stand people coming along and saying they've subscribed to me, and I don't do anything there. Right. So I I pulled out entirely, and I didn't realize till after I did that they have a free version too, but that tells you something right there to hold on to people they needed to do that. No, it's a good point. They could so they could. Uh, uh, have, by the way, you can't sign up for it anymore because last day to do so was yesterday. Uh, Posterous is down now, or Posterous. Um, I guess uh, if they got down to 100 users it wouldn't be, and made $500 a month, it wouldn't be worth their time. But, right. Right. Exactly. There's, there's, a, there's some a critical level mass, and, just, and it's, it's not, not forever. Economic. Yeah. Okay. But don't you, don't you think these kind of services that have social built into them really well, something like Post Haven, I guess is what, what it's called, don't you feel like the marketing cost is kind of built in? Don't you feel like the marketing kind of do, does right. it itself? Because presumably people are sharing links to their Post Haven blog, mm -hmm. and it's at, kind of advertising itself, which I think is kind of different than... I agree. It's than, not a magazine. A, yeah, it's not a magazine. It's a social tool. And so fixed, it kind fixed of costs spread. are lower, but there yeah. is a point beyond which it could be too small. But you still need growth, right? Do you? Still need Why? to find new users somehow. Why? Don't you? Why? I don't know. No, you well, don't. If you, Only if you want a business. Well, that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, actually, so. not even if you want a business. If you're content with a business that doesn't grow, I think there's always this presumption, oh, we got to get bigger and bigger, and I don't think you have to always get bigger. Do you? Mm. Let's say, no, let's no, say no. that they built into this enough to pay for a sysadmin and, and as many servers as they need for five bucks a month, and they just yeah, run it forever. Well, yeah, but they want sure they want an engineering is. team that's going to constantly kind of innovate, make it better, I guess so. right? Yeah. That costs yeah. money. It doesn't it do a lot of what Posterous used to do or Posterous used to do. It can't really evolve. Did you guys see Ghosts, that uh, open source mm -hmm. blogging platform Kickstarter? Oh, mm -hmm. no. Yeah, that, that really, it kind of, it warmed my heart. It really did. I guess I'm just sort of an, an old school web blogging person, but I'm dead. like, yeah, man. 2013, there's an open source blogging platform getting built by somebody who worked on WordPress uh, forever. Uh, John who, no yeah. Nolan. But yeah. Did you, get a picture yeah. Of her? Did you see Zach Braff uh, financed the sequel to Garden yeah. State? Two plus yeah, there are a lot of people really upset about that. Really? Yeah. Why? Well, because isn't he, is it, so. yeah, I mean, his yeah. net worth, isn't he worth like 22 million? What's he going to do his <laughs> Kickstarter for? You know? <laughs> uh, um, uh, they say in the movie business, you shouldn't back your own movies. You should use some other money. I mean, I think this gave him freedom from, you know, that, that's, that's, there's, there's this kind of anti-rich view that if you have money, you should all use it. You should never ask for money. Well, you know, he could go to the studios to ask for money. And then he said it was going to affect the product. Or he can go to the fans and ask for money. This is very Amanda Palmer. And Amanda Palmer got People hate Amanda Palmer for the well, same not, reason. Not all. Tom. Some do, but, but a lot of people are very much like, loyal fans. I mean, it just feels like Kickstarter is a platform for artists who have a lot of talent but just don't have the money mm -hmm. or don't have the faith from the, the traditional sort of backers. Yeah, so it was hard. Easy. I mean... I, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe Definitely. I got to look, look like Veronica Mars, for example. That I backed mm -hmm. happily because I was like, I want this. I'm a huge fan. I don't have no idea how how rich uh, or not Rob Thomas is, whether or not he could have funded it himself. But I felt like really, really good about that. The Zach Braff thing, I was sort of like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just not as big a fan of Garden State or of his of his work. But I was a <laughs> little bit like, no, Gina, eh. <laughs> you got a problem with a movie about Jersey? Huh? What's the problem? <laughs> I, look, I loved Garden State back in the day when I saw it. I, I wasn't like, when are we going to get the sequel or the, you know, the next Garden State? I was feeling that way about Veronica Mars. Um, so, I, you know, I don't know. I, I listen, I get it. I, it makes sense. I just, it's hard for, you know, Braff did this whole thing about how, you know, the man was going to like ruin his movie. And it's kind of like, dude, you could, you man. could. Use you your own money. I mean, I mean, you are the man. Yeah, I, mean, I think that was the sentiment. Like, you are the man. But <laughs> shouldn't, but this. Gina, shouldn't, shouldn't Kickstarter be for connecting with your fans? I mean, if you're, yes. if you're rich or not, if Amanda Palmer has millions of dollars, shouldn't it be, you know, sh I'm just trying to play devil's advocate. Shouldn't it be a platform for you to allow your fans to, to 
participate in what you're doing? Absolutely. Absolutely. I guess I just feel better when I see Kickstarter bring kind of unknowns into I, I want to see, you know, a completely unknown filmmaker who's just really young and mm -hmm. smart and hustles, you know, win, you know, win at Sundance or whatever. Like that makes that's just a uh, makes that's a story that makes me feel better than yeah, someone like Zach Braff. Or, well, I don't or, want to see know, just I, that. I, I also want to see the the, the, the the platform be successful and having some having some well-known names in there is part of what I think makes Kickstarter successful. Did you see uh, Amanda Palmer's TED talk? Mm -hmm. I didn't. It's in my to watch. It's in my Instapaper queue. It, you actually. should because it, it's, it's really really well done, and and I think it's a model for for some media. Yeah, but like there's NPR moments. There the are Guardian. there are cringeworthy moments in there, like when she says, "This poor family that she, <laughs> they yeah. gave us her their beds and they slept in the living room so I we know, could sleep in I their know. beds." And I understand what she was saying, and I and I kind of get it and support it, but it did kind of, it was a little cringeworthy. Like, yeah, okay, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a very Ted moment. Um. <laughs> but this is, you know, what I here. Let me let me propose this: that what you don't like about it, Gina, is it's and and the same thing with Veronica Mars. It's a which you did like. It's mo it's I a did. backwards move. It's a nostalgia move, and I would like to see Kickstarter support forwards, not backwards. Yeah, new things. New yes. things. Yes, that's a good point. But, but I mean, but if, there if, isn't there if also a bunch something of people want to give Zach like? Graff two million, why don't why can't they? They're gi they're giving, th and that would be the other question: is as long as people who are donating understand what they're getting, which is not a zilch zip. <laughs> Bupkis. Well, I got I got into I got into a big tip with one of my students a year ago, and I'll give him credit now, um, that he went he went after Matter, which was a, which was a site that was up. Uh, from journalists to do long form and charge 99 cents for it, and blah, blah, blah. And I think they raised something like $140,000. And he went after them. So I went after my student. Thought, you know, you're just being rude about this. Was, blah, blah, blah. My student was right. Matter right. was just bought by Medium. And my student did a post then that said, you know, okay, folks, what did you get for your 140 grand? Yeah, maybe you got a couple articles, but you supported something that in turn just got sold. And there's no expectation of equity here. And that's fine. That's what it is. But you know, what did you really support? You've got to think about what you're supporting when you do that. Now, I would argue, let me, let me try another thing on you, Gina. I don't know if you were an Arrested Development fan. I am. Um, okay, so Netflix came along, and Netflix is the salvation of bringing it back. But let's imagine Netflix weren't there. Let's imagine the producers said, we want to bring back Arrested Development. We want to put it on the web, whatever the business model is. Let's go to Kickstarter. Why not? Yeah, maybe I'm just being too subjective about this because I'm just, just like, well, like that's development Brad. is all. I mean, no, I actually, I, did, I liked Garden State. <laughs> I didn't feel like there was like a clamoring for for another movie. Well, but I, I was going to say there was a clamoring seems like there for Russian development. There is, there is for Russian development. Is, there is, there is. There's a huge but, fan but base. It, did, it got canceled too soon. soon. Like this is, and this is what happened with Veronica Mars, right? Like it just never got a fair shake. I would feel the same way about Firefly, Serenity, or or, or Dollhouse, like any kind of Imagine any kind of series that got cut off. Too soon. Star Trek okay, so let's mm -hmm. try that. Let's try that. So Star Trek gets canceled in 2013. Like the original Star Trek is the okay. The original Star Trek, right? Okay. And yeah. That, and now the fan the fans write letters and all this and they can't get anywhere. Now they could come and say, Well, F them, we can we can back this thing. So Leo, it fails Leo's test, it's going backward, but it's also taking something that's known and liked and supporting it. Yeah, no, I would, I would be in support of, support of that. You know, for me, it's the rich thing. It's it's that it's that I know that Rick, Zach Braff has enough money to fund his own movie. And 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 Jeff, you're probably right. I mean, I don't know. I don't have that kind of money, so I don't know really what the rules. Are. I get, I get. I don't know. Why wouldn't you well, fund your they own tell movie? You, they tell you, you should Veronica never Mars put is in. being subsidized by CW, isn't it? I mean, that CW is putting up like they yeah, they, they own they're the matching. rights and stuff like that. So it's yeah, not just the like creator matching. who's. Right, right. They, they, the creator basically said if we, if enough fans uh, kick in, then the man will match. Or there's some deal where they said the, the studio said, look, we'll we'll help you if you get this, if you raise this I much money, if you prove that there's enough interest, kind of upfront. I think we can agree that there are ways we'd like to see Kickstarter used to do forward-looking public projects for the public good. However, you, you all, it's gonna, it's an open platform, and so you're gonna get people doing things that we might not agree with. But if people put money, kick money in, and are and are and, and as long as they understand what they're doing, that they're not they're not getting yeah. a share in Garden State, they're not getting anything. Right. They're not even getting a movie. They're just saying, yeah, I'll give you ten bucks if you, please do it. But you may get nothing because I've learned that lesson kind of the hard way on Kickstarter. Yeah. I got a lot of nothing. Right. Uh, I guess the example that Jeff was using, though, I mean, of matter, 
you know, you wouldn't have known, oh, there's a potential that they're going to sell the, what I just funded to... to Understand, you could, be a, you could be suckered by this. So yeah. Yeah, all you're doing is suckering. using money to cast a vote in favor of something you want to see, and you're mm -hmm. getting nothing for it. As long as you understand well, that, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. You get well, the reward, right? There's a reward. Matter. Yeah, you get a T-shirt. Yeah, well, you, you, you get the reward that you agreed to, right? Like, you, you agree up front right. for, for a reward. I mean, right. it's not like you're not getting anything, right? Well, I mean, well, assuming the, that the, the creator follows through. Well, but you might also think this Pebble watch is going to be really cool and then get it and go, gee, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. fair enough. No, that, that you do have to be aware of. They, <laughs> might make, yeah, they might make Garden State 2 and might be like My Weekend with Bernie. Right. Is that and, good or bad, Leo? <laughs> yeah. You be the judge. You never know what the geek <laughs> Look, Brad raised the money. There's obviously the fan base. I just, I personally had a hard time sending Zach Braff 10 bucks because I think I need my 10 bucks more than Zach Braff needs then my don't 10 bucks. Yeah, then don't send him the money. So, so then I didn't. I didn't. I didn't back it. I'll actually probably see the movie, right? But I just, I just didn't back it. Yeah, you'll give him your 10 like, bucks then. Four bucks. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, you get nothing for that either. You include the babysitter. It's going to cost you some pretty pennies to see that. Thing. I know. Seriously. Oh, this is depressing. <laughs> That's I should have just backed up right the digital download. I wouldn't have to get the babysitter. But I can tell you, Amber MacArthur, who wanted to marry Zach Braff, is so excited, and she gave money, and she's this is the greatest thing ever. So there you go. I mean, it's just to each his own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it might, it might be just my subjective sort of fan, where, where my... I, I, but I understand what you're saying because I feel well, I squeezy about Kickstarter all the time, but I can't put my finger on it. So, here, here let me give you the, the, the Amanda Palmer thing was when she says that, that at some point, if you just open up and ask people, right. they become good generous and give. Yeah. As opposed to this whole notion Matthew and I love to go on about and get in trouble for of paywalls. You must pay. Right. I'm going to require you to pay. You should pay. You're bad if you don't pay. Right. And that's the attitude we have in media. Whereas what Amanda says is, she was just a street performer. People just gave her money, and she gave them smiles, I, or flowers, or songs. I don't know why and we have to have one or the other. We we don't we don't. But she's 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 at least saying. Well, in the LA media, we only got two. We've got advertising and paywalls, and that's it. It's, we're replicating the old models. No, there's three. We can ask for money. I mean, this is the new way of doing it. Money. Yeah. Right. So so Amanda says. So Amanda came out with one album, and it, it sold twenty five thousand copies, and she thought that's pretty good. Label said, no, it's not. It's awful. Rah, 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 rah. So she's out. She's gone. Next time comes around, she said, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to Kickstarter and get the thing supported. It was 25,000 people gave her whatever it was, $1.2 million, right? It was so, so it was the same, same number, number of people, of people yep. was able to support something by just opening it up and giving them the opportunity if they wanted to ask. No requirement. Obviously, no requirement, right? Nothing. And this is and the she promise. Also told, go ahead. Hmm? But this is the promise of the Internet, and that's why it's great. Because right. now yeah. there are more ways to do this. There's another great Kickstarter project up today. Uh, Planet Money, Adam Davidson and company from uh, right. NPR, who do, 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 who just did, have done a great job of covering the financial crisis. They want to follow a T-shirt from the cotton farm all the way through. Mm -hmm. So it's a tw you put in $25 in the project, and you're going to get the story of your T-shirt out of that, which is a nice idea for subsidizing a journalistic thing. Fully funded. They uh, Now, see, this is the other question. They asked for 50000 They got seventy three. What happens to the other twenty three? Profit. Uh, they can use the money to do really good reporting. Yeah. I've got no problem with them getting overage because they're public radio. They get, they get, they'll, they'll do. But what if it was stuff. Zach Braff? But aren't they fully funded well, already? Like, I think, I think Braff said they'll say they'll say that like, well, the, then we'll contribute the rest of the money to the to the movie. We'll just make the movie better. That's what they did with Veronica Mars. Like any overage, we'll just we'll have better shooting locations. We'll be able to spend we'll more days shooting. Catering. Better cater. Well, right. <laughs> but, you know, Veronica right. Mars, they were like, we'll shoot in, in Southern California, which is where we shot the show. We wouldn't be able to afford that uh, if, you, if I just get the minimum. So they don't say on this one, on the T-shirt one, what they're going to do with the 23000 extra dollars. Oh, but but I, I think that's easy. They, they do a lot of good reporting. Uh, I do don't do begrudge them. I agree. I think they're wonderful. Um, they, they, did, they did the best reporting. They, they, the giant pool of money, it was called. It was a, a co-project with um, This American Life. If you listen to it, people, it is it is the best explanation of how we got in the financial crisis. Uh, beautifully done. I actually like the idea of doing special reporting projects like that, you know, Kickstarter yeah. funded or, or yeah. specially funded. So instead it gives of them this, people a I'll voice give NPR a bunch doing, of money, right, give them something for a specific project. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see more companies try to do that, more media companies. Yeah, I, I just I do back the, uh, the Aaron Swartz documentary. That's something I'm, I'm yeah. really yeah. kind of excited about. So this is great. Yeah. 
I mean, I, I, I and then you look choice. at projects and some of, as, as long as people know what they're getting when they give money, which is the only question mark in my mind, yeah, then it's great. And I think that uh, Kickstarter has done everything they can. And, you know, when they started Kickstarter, it really was about funding creative projects like plays, movies, comic books, novels. It was, it was for the arts. And the fact that it's become so much more, I think, is interesting. And um, what it means is there's new, there, there's new ways to fund things that uh, make more possible for us. So that's great. That's creativity. Funds creativity. And on that happy note. Yes, I'm going to take a break. <laughs> Actually, I had a couple more things. What was it? Uh, oh, I should mention this EFF site. That was it. Yeah, it actually, that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, who's got your back? Yeah, who's got your back? Uh, I think um, you can Google it, but uh, we talked about it uh, on the previous show on Security Now, and I think he made a bit.ly, uh, bit.ly slash who back. <laughs> Let's see if it works. Nope. <laughs> Why back? Thank you. You got a good memory there, but that's probably because you're young, Jeff Needles. Why back? Let's try that. Yep. So bit.ly slash bit.ly slash why back. Who has your back? This is the Electronic Frontier Foundation. They have collated information about which companies help protect which data from the government. There are six categories ranging from requires a warrant for content to tell users about government data requests, publishing transparency reports, publishing law enforcement guidelines, fights for users' privacy rights in courts, all the way to fights for users' privacy rights in Congress. Apple has one star. They lobby. AT&T has one star. They lobby. They don't do anything else. Comcast publishes law enforcement guidelines and fights for users' privacy in court. That's it. Uh, we'll go down to Google, which has all but one star. They don't tell users about government data requests. I don't think that's strictly true. I think they do when they can, but it's not legal. They're not in legal in some Right. So I and think they Twitter did. Twitter and, and Google are both fighting around. Twitter got that star. Google didn't. But yeah. I think they're both mm -hmm. dancing around the same issues. So I'm not sure. I think Google probably deserves more credit than they get here. But Sonic.net, which is an internet service provider from here in Sonoma County and a really great company, um, and Twitter are the only two companies that got all six stars. Verizon, zero stars. <laughs> Along Surprise. with along with MySpace, some good work there. Good work there. Nice job. So worth worth looking at. I might question a little bit about this one on uh, tells users about government data requests because mm -hmm. they do. They do, but not all of them. And they can't yeah. legally on some of them in which. Right. So they gave the outline. Right. Remember, they gave the outline. Well, this is we can't yeah. say exactly what. I think that they've complied with in every respect that they can. Our uh, tip. Number and tool of the week. And uh, Matthew, if you want to give us a tip or a tool or something fun, a recommendation, we'll do that too. Matthew Ingram is here. Great to have you from Giga Ohm. Jeff Jarvis, Gina Trapani, you're watching This Week in Google, brought to you today by 99 Designs. I should, you know, show our Teespring uh, contests or a t shirt. We have our own t shirt, you know. And we didn't do Kickstarter, we just did a Teespring. T W -E, e S P R I N G dot com slash twit. What we do is uh, we create uh, limited edition stuff. We did mugs. We're doing a bobblehead. Right now it's a Twit t-shirt, but the story behind it is kind of interesting. This was designed, created by designer at 99designs.com. It's a place where designers go to get work. It connects businesses seeking good-looking, affordable designs with a community of over now 200,000 graphic designers who visit 99designs.com. So we asked for designs. We got a bunch of them. And, uh, and man, I'm thrilled with all of the designs we got. This was the, then we asked you to vote. These were, that was the winning design. But you can get all sorts of stuff. Logo design for starting at $299. Web design starting at $599. Digital marketing collateral like landing pages, Facebook cover design, banner ads, infographics. I like that one. That's a good one. Uh, those cost $199 or start at that level. Print marketing collateral like menus, brochures, flyers, greeting cards, product packaging started $199. T-shirts and hoodies and other apparel, $199. Mobile app design even, $599. This is a really neat place. So what you'll do, in fact, if you use our offer code, you're going to get a special deal. What you'll do is put a posting on 99designs saying, I want this uh, design. And designers submit their tentative designs. You work with them back and forth to get the design you want. Then you pay for your favorite. 
Very simple. Um, if you visit 99designs.com slash twig, you'll get a $99 power pack of services for free. More designer time and attention. 99designs will bold, highlight, and feature your design product in the marketplace. That means you'll get nearly twice as many designs. So you can call them at 800-513-1678, a special number just for our listeners, 800 513 one six seven eight. Chad, we should put that on the lower third. I just thought of that. Or visit. This is on the lower third. Ninety and easy to see. Ninety nine designs dot com slash twig. Love this service. We were really happy with the results we've gotten. I think you're gonna want to try it. We actually have a new project we're uh, gonna be putting on ninety nine designs. Stay tuned. I'm kind of excited about it. Time for our tip of the week, Ms. Trapani. I got this one from Lifehacker. This is one of Google's uh, advanced search operators that I actually wasn't aware of. You can you can search within numerical range by using a dot dot, right? So if you, if you saw an article, for example, I was looking for my favorite BuzzFeed list of all time, which is 33 animals who are extremely disappointed in you, which is very funny. <laughs> And I, and I couldn't remember, like, was it 33? Was it 10? Was it 100? Well, you can search Google. You can do, like, one dot dot, you know, 250, and then animals are disappointed in you, and Google will return results for, for any headline that has a, a, a number within that range uh, in wow. it. Uh, so uh, the Lifehacker example, Lifehacker does a lot of top 10s. I, I know, I, I realize that everyone's probably cringing at the idea there are so many lists now, the top 10 this or 167 ways to do that. And, yes, they're probably killing journalism, but sometimes they're really fun <laughs> and funny and a good place to start your research. So if you're looking for a listicle, you're looking for any headline oh, on web page. <laughs> that dog is so a, disappointed a, in me. Is very disappointed. <laughs> very disappointed. This this list <laughs> is so appeals to my sort of cow that got bringing. Like this is totally like, you know, very frankly shocked and disappointed. <laughs> um, <laughs> So you can use that the numeric range with the dot dot in between numbers if you're looking for any web pages with a number in it, but you're not sure what that number is, but you just know what the range is. That is a wild operator. Yeah, it's a crazy operator. It's Programmers things, get it because it's range. Yeah, it's a range, right? Exactly. But boy, that is <laughs> so a weird operator. Only Python, yeah. only a Python uh, programmer would think of putting that in. <laughs> So when you're looking for 67 ways to juice up your Android phone, you should just do, you know, 10 One, dot, dot, uh, <laughs> you know, 100, and you'll find it. <laughs> That's hysterical. Uh, does that, is PHP, you're, you do PHP programming too, right? Yeah, yeah. Does PHP I, yeah. support that operator, the dot, dot? <laughs> Uh, you know, that's a good question. I don't know that I would do it that way. I would just do less than and, you know, greater than. You know, I would just right. do a logical and. Right. You know, conditional. I don't know if it does ranges. Python does do that, though, doesn't it? Yeah. One dot dot ten. I should check it because I like it. It's briefer. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's a Google operator. Yes. Jeff Jarvis, your number of the week. 17% of adults in the UK, according to the Future of Britain report commissioned by media agency, 17% of UK adults think that Google has their best interest in heart. Tied with Jeez. Uh, churches. <laughs> Slightly wow. under 19% for supermarkets, but I don't know whether this came before or after uh, horse meat and their beef. 17%? Wow. I think Brits just are not a trusting people. They are not. <laughs> they are not. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <sighs> How can you not trust churches and grocery stores? Well, I got, reasons, gives you a lot of I got reasons. more reasons <laughs> not to trust churches and grocery stores than I do Google. Exactly. Who do they trust? Maggie uh, the Thatcher? The National Health Service. The National the Health Service. Doctors. 37%. Yeah. Oh, that, and that's only 37%. There are a bunch of commies, of course. Wow. This I wish a, I had. This a, I did not usually think of Britishers as skeptics, but I think that we can now say oh, it is they definitely the are. skeptical aisle. Yes. Yeah. Big Ginge says we trust our government. No, you don't. Do you, Matthew, want to give us a tip or an uh, app you like or anything like that? I guess this is kind of a cop-out in a way, but Google now, I hadn't really, you know, I'd looked at the cards, and, but, I mean, using it at home, I mean, I go so ver so few places, uh, you know, that, and I work at home, that the cards weren't really hugely useful. But when I was traveling in, in Italy, um, it became enormously useful, and I really started to see the potential um, you know, it telling me, bringing up the, the, my boarding pass, um, telling me, you know, there was traffic on the way to the airport um, so that I didn't miss my flight. 
that stuff is it's simple you know it's just and it's not rocket science but it just it was incredibly useful i agree i'm a fan in fact to me that's if google glass does that i'm gonna i might be very yeah. interested yeah exactly it yeah. was just I, it really opened my eyes yeah uh, I kind of guess I did my uh, my tools because I, I showed them both, the HTC One and the Galaxy yep. S4. We are, I'll tell you, uh, there's just no no question in my mind that Android is knocking it out of the park one way or the other. And the nice thing is the amount of choice you have. It, that Between the Nexus 4, the Galaxy S4, and the HTC One, there's something for anybody. Yeah. Uh, I, I put my mom on a Galaxy Note 2. She's never had a smartphone. Uh, and I put it now... Uh, Samsung does offer this kind of simple mode. So I put it in there. It had big text, which was great for her eyes. She's 80. Uh, and she's loving it. And she's just, she used the S Pen to sketch with. And I thought, you know, th it's, this is just really exciting to me. I thought Android might be a little complicated for her, but no, she has no trouble with it. So uh, I That's think... That's great. It just seemed like a golden age for Android. I'm, I'm excited time. about I.O. Yep. Yeah. It's a great time. I want to thank you all for being here. Thank you to Matthew Ingram, gigaohm.com. Good to see you in the boxing gloves. Right. You, you kept the gloves me. off during the show, and I think that's important. He's a, he's a Canadian, so he's nice. Are you Canadian? <laughs> I am, yes. Yeah. I kind of knew. He, he believes in process, didn't you hear? Process. <laughs> <laughs> well, make sure that you keep us on your schedule for future. Okay. Thank or, or you'll be oot. <laughs> No, no, no. I'm oh, sorry. He's never coming back after this, Jeff. We're like, we're mocking I love him. I'm a Canada file. I'm so glad you're... <laughs> uh, we're both Canada files. I agree. I agree. Matthew, thank you for joining us yes. today. Yes. Thank uh, you. Always good to see you. Not, not... Thank you for not mocking me. No. <laughs> it's great to have you, Matthew. Always. It's not mockery. It's love, Matthew. Jeff Jargis, Jarvis, now Appendix Free, uh, uh, joins us. Jargis? <laughs> Jeff Jargis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to butcher your name for every day you continue to... Give me a hard time about the Pixel. Uh, well, forever. <laughs> okay. He still has, okay, he still Jasper. Has seen, though. No, okay. No <laughs> Jeff is at uh, uh, buzzmachine.com. That's where he blogs. You can also read his books. Public Parts is the latest. And uh, Gutenberg the Geek is a 99 cent single on uh, Amazon. Soon to be translated into German and into a uh, uh, an audio book on Amazon. Awesome. What's the What's the oh, German word for geek? I don't know. I'll find out soon. It's 45 letters long. <laughs> Thank you, Jeffrey. Always good to see you. And, of course, Gina Trapani, now with Infant. Now with Infant. Now. You know, a quick plug. I, I, I uploaded a new uh, release of my Android app to do text to the Play Store this week. Oh, lots of good optimizations, yes. modernization, going going hollow all the way. I was having lots of fun with Android's uh, contextual action bar this week. So check it out. Uh, it's at todotxt.com. And, of course, I'm the co-host at All About Android, and that's on Tuesday evening. So uh, you should come, come yeah. watch that as well. By the way, To Do Text is available on iOS, too, for those of you who are still holding out. Sure is. Very nice. And you must and get the Android version you, is better. If you want to support your next project on Kickstarter, I'll back it. Oh, I appreciate You know, that's that. true. I would back <laughs> anything true. Gina Me wanted too. to do, I would. I would. I absolutely oh, wow, do. even the Kickstarter skeptic. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. I, don't know, I don't believe you surveys about who would pay. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> uh, you believe me. <laughs> we pay. Oh, Honest. <laughs> Thank you. We do uh, this week in Google every Wednesday, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 2000 UTC on twit.tv. Please stop by and watch live. But if you can't, we've got on-demand versions, audio and video available after the fact. Twit.tv slash twig. Stay tuned. If you're watching live, Daria Pino joins us to talk about her new book, Foodist. Uh, I can't wait because I need to lose weight. We'll find out about that in just a bit on triangulation. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time on This Week in Google.